God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of His holiness. I know many people are comfortable and content in their life, in their lives of sin, in their lives of, you know, believing in false doctrines and, you know, false beliefs. But I look at my life like this. You know, there's many people in the world, especially in America, who don't exercise, right? And we're not criticizing those people. We're not looking at them in the bad light because we know that life is based off of choices. But, you know, you might be able to speak information, not that you might, but when you speak information, the correct and proper way is to, to say it is this way. When you say certain things, right, and you give wisdom and knowledge and understanding, you might move some people to say, hey, I wanna, you know, work out, I wanna exercise. I'm talking about relating to exercising and working out. You might say, hey, I want to work out. I want to exercise. I want to lose weight. I want to be healthy, right? So that's where the person who exercising, you know, personal trainer, whoever, will come in and say, well, hey, look, this is what you got to do to put you on this routine, this program, so you can benefit. What about people that's living in the world, right? That's thinking suicidal all the time because of their health problems, because of, you know, them being overweight, because of, you know, people might joke on them or or they have low self-esteem or whatever the case may be, right? So you got that person who can come in and help them to raise their self-esteem, to get them to look at themselves differently and not how the world sees them and to reach their best potential, what their body will allow them, you know, to reach, you know, lose the weight, you know? And, and, and be comfortable and happy with inside themselves. So that's how I look at my life. I look at people out here as being suicidal. They think that there's no purpose in life. You know, they're, you know, they're like, what are we here for? You know, like, you know, if there was a God, you know. So I deal with a lot of stuff on a daily basis. So I look at myself, you know I mean, to help you understand. I look at myself the way... God sees me, but the how you might, you know, understand it is like, just say you're helping people who suicidal, got low self-esteem, you know, people who just, you know, give up on themselves. They don't really care. See, I'm trying to introduce them just like how you would introduce somebody to a workout program, to dieting, to eating better, eating healthier, drinking more water, right? Taking care of themselves. That's what I do as far as with Christ. You see what I'm saying? So I'm here to introduce you to a way that's going to change the way you think, change the way you feel, change the way you look, change the way you talk, change the way you operate and, and, and change the way you function. So that's my sole purpose and that's my job, you know, my duties and obligation. So if I can make these videos and people that see them in the future, you know, could say, hey, I didn't know that that. I didn't know that this is how it's supposed to be as a Christian. I didn't know that God can keep you from getting sick. I didn't know that God can protect you from being attacked by demons. I didn't know that it's not normal being attacked by demons. I didn't know it's not normal, you know, having sicknesses. I didn't know it's not normal, you know, to hear voices in my head. I didn't know it's not normal to be held down while I'm sleeping. I didn't know it's not normal to, you know, uh, have sex in your dreams. I didn't know none of these things. You know, I didn't know that, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, you receive, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power, cast out devils, heal the sick, you know, raise the dead, you know, you receive knowledge, wisdom. I mean, you be, you know, you have a supernatural entity living inside of you. I didn't know those things. So when I teach the truth, I don't care what's going on in these false churches. You don't hear me naming these church names and you don't see me making, I don't have no YouTube channel dedicated to exposing the mega pastors and all this stuff. Like, you understand? Because we know that, like I was telling Sarah and I was telling Jeremy, like the world trains you to see what they want you to see as being wrong and what they want you to see as being right. So you won't see it the way God sees it. You will see it the way wicked people want you to see it because they're determining what they feel is really bad and what they feel is not so bad. For instance, if I'm not speaking facts, let me give you wisdom then. Look at our country, how they have different murders. Like they got first degree murder, second degree murder, third degree, 
Like, who told them that that's how you're supposed to, you know, uh, look at murders? Murder is murder. Whether it was premeditated, whether it wasn't meditated, it doesn't matter. Someone still was murdered. Someone still was killed. Someone still died, right? So, man, you see, the Bible talks about dogs, right? It talks about dogs. It talks about a bear. It didn't call them polar bears and gray bear. I mean, polar bears and brown bears and Kodiak bears. They just called them, you know, hey, it's a bear. So the point that I'm trying to make is that it's man that comes in and put all these, you know, different. They want to put names on everything. Oh, this is PG-13 because it's some cursing inside this movie. This is rated R because it's, you know, violence and, and, and nudity. This is rated X because it's sexually explicit. Like, this is rated PG. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could look at a PG movie and there's still bullying. There's still jealousy. You know, like, Secret... What was that movie? Secret Life of Pets? The little the little dog was in front of the TV screen watching, like, a, a cartoon of a man and a woman, like, being sexual with each other. And she was, like, like you know, basically, like, getting aroused. What, what else would you call it? Like, if it's supposed to be a pet... That was like considered to be like a little girl or whatever that dog was, seemed like a pets. What was what was the what was the dog doing in front of the TV screen when she was watching, you know, the cartoon of the man and the woman? She was being like she was like liking what she seen. Now it's supposed to be a kid movie, right? So like this is what I'm trying to show you. Like you have to understand that wickedness does not know how to be righteous. So they try to mask it and try to make it seem what they feel is okay. You think that you think that you think that they seen you think that who made the movie The Secret Life of Pets if I'm saying it wrong then then y'all correct me but you know you know what I'm talking about so you you see all them scenes where the, the dog was like you know acting the way it was acting lustfully you think they see it like that cuz they see that as being normal little girls be having crush on you know boys and boys be having crush on like they call it a crush what is crush though crush is lust you see what I'm trying to say? They name things that they feel is okay. Come on, Sarah. What is a crush? That's lust. I got a crush on you. I lust after you. There's nothing else there. I don't know you. You don't know. Like, come on. Think about it. I like you because you're attractive. That's lust. What else is it? Even the Bible said, if a man looks upon a woman to lust there after her, left there up here, have already committed adultery. So they're telling you it's lust. It ain't no such thing as no crush. You know what I'm saying? Like in the Bible, they didn't date. You know, dating leads to fornication. Fornication leads to more sex partners. More sex partners lead to, you know, lack of contentment. You know, wanting the best and this and that. Not willing to, you know, to to to, um, to deal and compromise and, and, and endure situations. Because you're like, no, I want to find the perfect person. Like you got everybody saying, I want to find the perfect man, the perfect woman. What is that? What is that? Because you look at Isaac, he met his wife. You know what I'm saying? You look at Jacob, he met his wife, like, you didn't see them like, oh, I, I want, I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Abraham, father, I want you to make sure that my wife is perfect. You don't see that in the Bible where they, they saying a man got to be this way and a man got to be that way and a woman got to be this way and a woman got to be that way. That's the world that tells you that stuff. The world feeds you. You got to, listen to what I'm trying to explain to everybody. God created the world and God made every human being. So much of the world is in his control. Everything is in his control. But because you have free will, a lot of things are able to be done. A lot of things are able to be looked at. A lot of things are able to be, you know, uh, practice or put into act. Right. But he still gave you a conscience. He still instored in you, you know, being married and stuff like that. So it's basically like it's basically like somebody giving you a car. Right. And putting one tank of gas in there. But you don't know what kind of gas going there. So once that gas runs out, you don't know what type of gas going there. You got a fresh oil change. Just look at it like this. God gives you everything you need when you're born, right? That's called grace. Once that grace fades, you're on your own. That's why you start seeing people get start changing, having health problems, and their eyesight start getting worse and different things like that. You know, they start gaining weight and they, they, their metabolism has changed. The grace changes. So I'm telling you, it's like when somebody give you a brand new car and you, you're not educated on taking care of that vehicle. You can't do it on your own. And you're not trying to educate yourself. So that full tank of gas is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to run out. That oil change is going to need to be, the oil going to need to be changed. Coolant, you know, transmission flush after a certain amount of years, it's going to break down. That's what life is like without God. 
You understand? So the world, you're living in this world. You can drive, you can go A, B, and C, but you might get into an accident. You see what I'm saying? That's what life is like without God. So you got choices. Your car is going to get you places because it was designed to be a reliable source of transportation. So what I'm saying is that God has a little bit of grace over people, even if they don't choose to live for him. But you're going to go through many things and that time is going to run out. Right? So what I'm saying to you is that we always created to live for God. It doesn't matter what you choose or what you want to do. He created us. Can't no one get away from that fact. What you choose to do as you on this earth, that's your choice. I and mean, while you're on this earth, that's your choice. But all I'm telling you is that the most important thing to understand is that God's in control of everything. Right? He's in control of everything. Everything. Oh, I forgot to put the thing up here. Hopefully it still works. Oh, okay, it did. Oh, that's a blessing. Okay. So... The point of me making this video is that when we live apart from God, right, this is where you get all the names and, you know, the Bible say inventor of evil things, men, you know, people creating what they want to create. It's in people's nature because it's in your nature to live for God and to serve God. And if God is not served then things will become your God, whether it's Google, whether it's food, whether it's whatever, sex, lust, it become your God. So what I'm saying is that the things of the world that you hear of today, the names and what people tell you, that comes from a wicked world that's allowed to do that because they have free will. But the world is still being governed by God's power. That's why we don't live like the purge. You know, people have a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, but you don't see people just, you know, every human being just killing people and murdering them and doing all it. Like, you know, what I'm saying it's not in everybody. Few people choose to do it. So I'm just showing you that that's because of God's grace. So when you live apart from God, that's when you start. The Bible tells us as Christians, right? It says, cast down imaginations and every high thing. That's also because knowledge of God and bring everything that comes to the beings of Christ. So you got people who don't know that Bible verse. So that means that in their mind, they're going to be thinking all type of stuff, believing all type of stuff. And they don't know how to cast it down and to apply God's word. So what I mean is that anybody can believe in a tooth fairy, right? But what makes you not believe in a tooth fairy? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because what is a tooth fairy? Like, what kind of creature would that be? A little, a little woman that flies around? Is that, is that humanly possible? Is there any little thing that looks like Tinkerbell in our world? You see what I'm trying to say? That's what the Bible does for us. That's how the Bible helps us to see the truth. That's what I'm trying to explain to y'all. So are you following me, sir? Y'all following me what I'm saying? So without the word of God, you're going to be left to think whatever you want to think and believe whatever you want to believe. You see? So the word of God makes it to where you can use his word and to examine everything in light of his word. So that's why it's something like, it's like anybody could say, oh, I believe in a tooth fairy. But then the word, the word comes, the Bible comes, God's word comes and say, well, he said he only made angels and humans and animals, right? No aliens. So that's, we slash aliens. Tinkerbell, we slash Tinkerbell. Santa Claus, uh, uh, Rudolph the Red Nose, Reindeer that Fly. It's not in the word. So we know it doesn't exist. And then we know also, in, even if it's not in the word, we know, humanly speaking, that that's not possible. You know, there's nothing that has ever been seen as a Tinkerbell or a Tooth Fairy. You understand Cupid shooting an arrow with a, a arrow and shooting at you. So we can we can we can we can we can abolish those things. We can we can shun those things because it's factual. So all I'm saying is that you got are y'all following where I'm going with this? People, Sarah, are y'all listening to me? Just y'all listen to me. People can think whatever they want to think. But that's when you come with the God's word and you destroy whatever it is that they are thinking. Whatever it is that they are believing by what the Bible says, because the Bible makes sense and it's knowledge. And and that's there you go, Sarah. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. It's cold out here. That wind was blowing. Listen to what I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying, Sarah. See what I'm trying to say? Not only do it make you not listen to things that's not that aren't real, it makes you, you know, live in fantasies. Right? And fantasies and imaginal and imaginable things. That's why I'm using the tooth fairy because we all heard that before. Most of us heard that before growing up. Oh, the tooth fairy gonna come. 
Santa going to come. Santa Claus is a, it don't matter if it's a holiday. It's a made up, you know, if, if imaginal things is not real to people and people aren't like, like they don't, they, if people don't really, if people, if, if it's not true that people believe in fantasy things, why do we got games like Final Fantasy? Why is there movies like the Chronicles of Narnia? Like all this stuff that is not real, but they make millions of dollars because you go and watch it. So it's bigger than Christmas. Stop talking about Christmas and like all these pagan holidays. It's bigger than that. You take away Christmas, you got movies. You take away movies, you got games. Take away games, you got music. So fantasy and imaginable, imaginary thinking and, and, and imaginary believing in things is worldwide spread in multiple different areas. So you can take away Christmas and take away all the fictional and fake things, but people still find pleasure in fantasies. You got people that take steroids. So they, they don't even accept the fact that their bodies don't build that type of muscle. You got people that get B, that get BBLs. You got guys now getting fake abs. Right? Because they don't want to lose the weight, work out, or they bought, they, they won't have an a, a eight-pack ass. So they go and get them done. So what I'm telling you is, is that you can get rid of Christmas and everything, but people are still going to embrace, you know, false realities. Because they, because when they don't embrace the real reality, which is God's word, it opens them up to uh, embrace a, a false reality. I should put my hoodie on. You know, it don't, it don't, it don't allow them, you know, to embrace, you know, the, the true reality, you know, which is the word of God. So that's what I'm trying to explain to everybody, is that without you seeing the truth of God's word. Something is going to become your truth and your truth is going to become, I mean, even though it's false truth, but it's, that's why the Bible, what did it say in Thessalonians, y'all? It said that he going to make them believe in a lie. So that lie is going to become their truth. You think a person will say, Hey, I'm believing in a lie. No. You think when people walk in, you think people think that Islam is a lie. You think that people think that Buddhism is a lie. Like you think that because they hear me talking about Jesus, they believe that it's real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that their, their truth, their truth can be a lie. That's why they say, woe unto you that call evil good. So if it's, if it's possible to call evil good, it's possible to, to believe in things, you know, that are the contrary. So what I'm saying to you is that the word of God, give, like when I'm on the phone with Sarah and them, I'm on the phone talking to different brothers and sisters, I'm showing them how the word of God is the standard for life. You can, you can tell me anything and I can say, well, look, this is what the word of God say, Right? Just with the word of God, like it could be lust. You could say, well, you know, what about it? You know, it being my penis and I want to sex with what I want to sleep with. I said, okay, but what about when the girl gets emotionally attached? What about when you get attached? What about when you got multiple partners? If, it, if it's normal, if it's normal inside your being, how come you can't have multiple women, right? I'm talking about worldwide spread. I ain't talking about the few guys that got like four girlfriends and they all living together in one house. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying worldwide spread. Why does it, as, as, as the world as a whole, why does it feel more normal for one person to be with one person? I'm talking about a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, and wife. Why is it not normal worldwide where three or four women or four men could be married to the same person at the same time and living in the same household? You very rarely see stuff like that where people are just walking around. Right. And they got multiple partners. They're like, yeah, this is how we're living. Most people are going to get jealous. You can't get a person all your time. Think about it. You got three women that you're that, that you're your 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 girlfriends with. Somebody's going to get jealous. Once that money run out, whatever you're doing, whatever you got, it's not going to sustain them because what was given to them by God is not going to be satisfied because it wasn't designed for human beings, you know, to be joined to multiple different people. You, you understand or have to share a person. That's not the way the Bible says you one flesh. So if you get married and you become one flesh, right? That's why I said one man, you know, he took it from Adam's rib. It's supposed to symbolize something. So if you're, if you're joined to, you know, multiple different people, you never will embrace that unity, you know, being one flesh. So what I'm saying is, is that apart from living for God, your mind is going to believe everything that's not real. Because the only thing that is real, right, as far as knowledge and truth, is the word of God. 
It's telling you where the world came from. It's telling you how God did it. Like, it don't matter that you don't believe it. How does it not make sense? Where else did the world come from? Where else? God said he, he, he poured it out of here and made it out of there and, you know, made the sun and the moon. Where else did it come from then? Who else is claiming to create these things but outside of the Bible? You see what I'm saying? Like, you can sit there and say, oh, it's made up. It's like, who, for what? What are people getting from making up the, what the Bible says? It's, cl it's clearly telling you. Even Job, it breaks down how these things work and how these things function and how everything goes on. You see what I'm saying? So, like, you, like it, it's explaining everything to you in the Word of God. So, apart from the Word of God, there's no belief. You're going to believe in whatever you want to believe that doesn't make any sense. But it's going to give you comfort. You're going to say, oh, I believe in aliens. You've never even seen an alien. People sit here and talk all about God. You know, oh, I, if I could just see God, I'll believe. If God could just come talk to me. You believe in Bigfoot. You believe in aliens. You believe in ghosts. Ain't nobody never even seen no ghosts. How are you going to see what's invisible? Like, how, how are you going to see a ghost and it's not, it doesn't have flesh and blood? Just, I mean, just explain. So what are you seeing? You see what I'm trying to explain to you? Like, what are you seeing if you're, if you're seeing a ghost? Like, what, what, what is it made up of? What materials is a ghost made up of? Skin? Bones? Because you'll see them in the physical. So if, it, if it's invisible, then how are you seeing it visibly? You see what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm just telling you stuff like, oh, uh, uh, I'm these ghosts. They make movies like Ghostbusters. People say, oh, that was a good movie. They make movies like Ninja Turtles, where you got Ninja Turtle guys running around doing karate kicks. And you got a big rat that's sitting there talking to people named Master Splinter. You see what I'm trying to tell you? That's why the Bible is not accept, uh, accepted. That's why in, in Christianity, in Christianity, that's why they, when they hear the word of God, they don't accept, you know, what's being told and, and what's being said. They don't accept it. They don't accept it because it's not it, what they're doing and what they believe in is not reality. Think about it. They're doing physical stuff. The Bible is spiritual. So when you come and telling people, hey, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, they're not doing that. They're not doing what the Bible say 100%. They created what they believe, and they're just going, they created a own system and function, and they're just pulling things from the Bible to give them, you know, uh, comfort and believing that, you know, they're living for God. That's all it is. You see what I'm saying? Like, My hair is locked as well, brother. What is determined as long? Even if I had my hair out, it would be. That's a good. That, so, so Kellen, I'm not. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Say it. Say it. Uh, you said my hair is locked as well, brother. What is determined as long? Even if I had my hair out, it would be an afro. Would it be considered long. Well, look. This is what I'm trying to show you, Jeremy. Give me that verse, Jeremy, real quick in Corinthians, and let's help Kellen out. Let's help. Uh, Kel, uh, Kel, is it Colleen? Or Kellen, Kellen, or K Kellen, let's help him out. Give me that verse in Corinthians, Jeremy, about what Na what it says about um, if, um, you know, if a man nature says a man has long hair, it's a shame unto him. Give me that real quick to help him out real quick, so I can show him something real quick. And that's a that's a good question, brother. I'm gonna show you real quick. But I want to show you something real quick. I want to show y'all like what's going on out here, like like what's taking place like in the world, how how people just function. Nobody's questioning anything. People just do what everybody doing. Like for instance, look at this right here. Okay, you see, little kids playing in the water. Other little kids uh, fishing on the pier. You got children. People cooking. People at the park. Right. This is how the world functions. Okay? Nobody is wondering, hey, are those kids, you know, being taught things that's going to make them, you know, grow up wrong or, you know, listen to bad music? Like, are they cursing? You know, are they doing this? they doing that? Nobody cares about that. You understand? They're playing. They look at it the way they want to look at it. Okay? That's the reality. They looking at it the way they want to look at it. You see? So that's the world that we live in. That's the world that we live in. People do what they feel is normal. You can look at the children. The children could be at the playground, right? 
and they could be bullying one another. But if you don't see that as bullying, you're not going to think it's bullying. If you don't see one, you know, like being mean with their toys, you ain't going to see that as being mean with their toys. Because a person is going to determine what they feel is right and what they feel, you know, is wrong. Right? I right, this now. There we go. You know, a person going to determine what they feel is right and what they feel is wrong. But when you have the word of God, you'll see where the Bible says, you know, if a person actually, want, a person actually go one mile, go with them two miles. You know, and, and, and you know, uh, it talks about giving and, you know, just having compassion and having love. So we want a person that's in the world, they're going to determine what they feel that a child is doing right or a child is doing wrong. According to what they believe or how they were taught. Or what they feel is right or what they feel is wrong. But see, as a believer, we're going to know what the words say. And we're going to say, well, our child shouldn't be acting like that. Regardless. Like, what's making them? No, no, this is mine. I don't want to share. It's my toy. You can't play with it. Or like, you'll see them playing with a kid. And they'll be like, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I don't want to play with you. Or she's coming. Let's, let's, or he's coming. Let's go over here. Most parents are gonna, they're not going to say anything because that's how the parent is. The parent like that. Oh, I don't mess with everybody. And my child, the same exact way. You see what I'm trying to say? But we will see it and say, well, the Bible says, love your neighbor, love yourself and love your enemies. So there should be no reason why a child is behaving that way. You see what I'm saying? But a person might look at that and be like, oh, that's just normal. They don't mess with everybody. I like that. Then they'll, they'll, they'll believe a delusion like, oh, yeah, stranger danger. So that's why yeah, they like that because they don't need to be friendly to everybody. But how do a child know how not to be friendly when a child whole existence is being friendly? Think about it. You can't teach a child to be mean. They, they don't have the brain capacity to understand to be like an adult. I'm not even saying adults should be that way. So it's like people make their kids grow up so fast and expose them to things they're not supposed to be exposed to. They don't have the mental capacity to understand adult things. That's why you understand. That's why like children can mimic adults, but they, they never can be an adult. An adult is an adult. A child is a child. They, they don't have the brain capacity to, to be able, they don't have the logic, right, to be able to understand the things that adults do. Okay? So, that's another thing. So, Kellen, let's look at what it says. First Corinthians 11 and 13. Um, you still there, Kellen? Because if you're not, I don't, I don't know if you left. I don't want to go into the whole thing if you, if, you, uh, if you left. Just throw me, uh, let me, just comment if you're still there, Kellen, so I, I can go into it for you and just give you what the words say. Okay, and then I'll go from there. But if he left, y'all, I'm not going to go into it because y'all, you know, I did this already um, multiple times. Well, I was going to talk about today. It's kind of funny to talk about today. And, um, but, uh, Yeah, so I just wrote him and asked him was he still there. Okay? But um he asked a good question. He said, What is too long? Right? Now, I'll just go into it. I was gonna talk about I wasn't gonna talk about the limp. I was gonna just talk about that verse though. But um one thing I want one thing that I can help him understand is that we have to understand you know, what the word says. See, many people are trying to teach us and talk to us from what they think and what they feel, right? People will come and say, this is what, this is how things should be. That's what I was telling uh, Sarah today. When you look around you, all these churches are people who did not agree with what they read, but they couldn't, you know, erase what they read, right? They don't want to portray being something different. So they created their own system in their own format. You know, think about it. How can that's just like people. That's like that's like if everybody was claiming to be one thing. Right. And but everybody is segregated. Would they be a part of that one thing that they say they all claiming? No, because they segregated. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like if, when someone try to tell you that they're a Christian, you got to look at them and say, how? Like what make like what makes you a Christian? You know what I'm saying? They're going to tell you what Google said and what they read off of, off of somebody Bible commentary. They don't go to the Bible and tell you because they can't. Anybody today, I'm telling you, besides that 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%,
right? Anybody today that's going to these churches and claiming to be Christians, they're not Christians because they're separating themselves, right? There's nowhere where we were going to church separately, where we were, we wasn't together, we wasn't unified. So if you're sitting here going to like tomorrow, people going to, if you, if y'all tomorrow, if y'all going on, on YouTube and Facebook and look at all these church services, you're going to see so many different people that's claiming to be one in God, but they all going to be separated, segregated. Think about it. Christ came and said supposed to be one in him. That's the word. So you see, that's the point that I'm trying to make, like how the brother asked the question about the hair, you know. It never says that we got to cut our hair. Look what it says right here. Judge in yourselves. Is it calmly? Is it um, calmly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Right? Don't even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. Now look at the next verse. But if a woman, if a woman have long hair, it's a glory to her. Her hair is given unto her for covering. Right? Now, so look at what that says, right? Look at what that says. Now, just think about it though. Just think about this. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Let me spin this camera around. Watch this real quick. Hold on. I want y'all to see. So you see all these children, right? Now, it says, don't nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, why would it be wrong for a man to have long hair but not children? If it's wrong in God's eyes, why would it say man? Why wouldn't it say it's that having long hair is a sin? That's not what it says. So you're saying that children can have long hair but not men. It don't say men, children. It says nature. Now, this is why This is why in Peter, I'm not going to get uh, Jeremy to do it for me. But in 2 Peter chapter 3, they clearly tell you that people don't understand Paul's epistles. It says they unlearned and they unstable. So it's clear that people do not understand what Paul is saying here. Okay. He never said God all through Corinthians. He mentioned that he had commands from the Lord. He instructed them people on how to marry. If they got divorced, I mean, if the, if the left, if the wife left them, she got to remain unmarried or she got to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, back with him. They all through scripture. They tell you these things. Instructions. This does not say we got to cut our hair. This is people not understanding what the brother... Look at the verse before verse 14. Judge in yourselves, is it calmly that a woman prayed to God uncovered? What? He's not even talking about us there. Then he says, don't even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. What does that mean? They're showing you how the world looked at men and women. The world. So he's using that to show you that women should be... Hair should be covered when they pray. Okay, that's what he just said. Didn't he just tell you in, in verse uh, 13, judge in yourselves. Is it calmly that a woman praying to God uncovered? He's asking a question. Then he's, next thing he's doing is making a statement. Don't even nature itself teach you. Nature, he's, he's talking about what the world says. So he's saying that you already know the difference between a male and a female. Right? From what you've seen in the world. How the world tells you, oh, you shouldn't have long hair. That's the world. That's not saying that we can't have long hair. That's just, that's just like saying, don't the world say that there's no God? Don't the world teach, don't nature teach you that there is no, that there is no God? Don't nature teach you that it's a shame to be believing in God that you can't see? It's, a, it's like saying the same thing. So that's not saying that we're not supposed to believe in God because he's saying nature. He's just saying that's the way that you understand that a woman has long hair and a man, you know, hair is not long. Right. That's what he's saying here. But he's talking about the world at that time in place. Right. Because there's no instructions on a person cutting their hair. A child. So nowhere does it say that men 
and children should have their hair cut. It's nowhere it says that. So you're saying that up until an adult, you could wear your hair long. And then when you become a man, you got to cut it. So 18, you got to cut it. You see what I'm trying to say? It doesn't say man. Then they'll say, well, if man supposed to do it, children do it. That's not what it says. See, we can't make the Bible be what we want it to be and make it, you know, uh, uh, you know, interpret it the way we want to interpret it when it's already interpreted. That's the one thing. That's that's why I come here to, 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 to do these teachings to show people like you can't just be saying what you want. That's why we got all these false doctrines. And that's why there's no power in none of these churches. Because they walk around saying and, and, and speaking, you know, what they want. Instead of uh, believing in what the words say. Everybody. Oh, why does it just stick on my nose right here? Here we go. Like I had a little booger or something. So, you know, they all speaking on what they want instead of what the word says. That's why I'm going to get into this. So, remember, nature does not teach us. Let me ask you a question. Why is it talking about woman in verse 13? Woman in verse 15. So is it about us cutting our hair or is it telling you the difference between a man and a woman as far as how the world sees it? The world is nature. That's not God. Because that was God, then God would have been a hypocrite and it would have been contradictory to allow Samson to grow his hair. It would have been contradictory and hypocritical to allow Solomon to grow out his locks. And then the prophets wouldn't would have been contradictory and hypocritical to speak on locks. It doesn't matter what it would have been. There's nowhere in the Bible because you're chosen by God or because you're someone, you know, that, that God chose to use that he allow you to sin and go against his word. So you're saying because David was a king, he was allowed to sleep with Bathsheba. You're saying because David was a man of God's own heart, he was allowed to kill Uriah. You're saying that because David, you know, promised was promised that a king will always be on the throne. You're saying that he was allowed to number the children of Israel like he did. And the angel was sent to destroy her and 70,000 died. Show me anybody that was chosen by God, right? That was allowed to commit sin. So you're saying when Samson was sleeping with all those women or sleeping with Delilah, God gave him a pass. So it wasn't the same sins that made him. Was it his growing his hair that made him uh, God power leave him? Was it was it was it was it him having dreadlocks that made God power and God's spirit leave him? Right. God leave him. No, it was him disobeying what God said. Right. And that's what it was. So when you look at everywhere in scripture, it don't matter who was chosen by God. They had to obey God. Even Moses got in trouble for striking a rock. Even Aaron got in trouble for making a golden calf. So I don't I don't know where you can find, see in scripture where because somebody was chosen, they were allowed to just commit sins. Show me anywhere. Where even James say that, you know, those who choose to be master will face a greater condemnation. So there's nowhere in scripture where somebody that was chosen by God was able to grow their hair out if it was a sin. It's not a sin. They're teaching you this. Just like they're teaching you that if you don't pay your tithes and offerings, you're going to be cursed. This ain't the only thing. You're thinking because I, I have a few people that watches my Facebook and my YouTube, that's the only thing people are going to be talking about. Once they start seeing and hearing and, and you know, they're going to be coming with all type of stuff off of what was told through Christianity. You understand? It's many things that was taught to keep you from seeing the truth. You don't think Satan know that God is going to always bring up real people and people that really live for him? Of course he knows that. So he got to build armies. He got to build, you know, uh, 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 false ministers. And, you know, he got to send out spirits because it has to be warfare. The Bible says, weapons of warfare are not, uh, uh, not carnal, but mighty through God, right? It says, weapons not against flesh and blood. So you know that Satan knows that God has always raised up true men of God, but he always had people who opposed those men of God as well. He always had religions oppose the truth. Before Christ came, where did the Pharisees and Sadducees come from? Did you see anywhere where it mentioned Pharisees and Sadducees? But soon you get to the four Gospels, you hear about Pharisees and Sadducees. They were nowhere in the Old Testament. Satan prepared that. Made them play like they was of God. Made them think that what they were doing was of God. So then when God came himself, they rejected him. That's facts. It's always been that way. It's always been that way. 
Even in the Old Testament, they didn't want God to be their God. They wanted a king. That's why they got King uh, Saul from. It's always been that way. Satan is always prepared because he know that it always repeats itself. History repeats itself. Nothing new under the sun. So he knows that God. He God. He knows that in order for people to really truly receive salvation and truly see God's power, he got to send people. Even if a thousand years went by. And it hasn't been a true man of God on this earth since a thousand years. Satan knows it's going to come one day because even the word of God says, you don't think Satan can see what the Bible says? What does the Bible say is going to happen in Revelations? The two prophets are going to come. So you see what I'm saying? Like Satan can look into the Bible and see what says is going to come. He don't got to talk to God. He can open the Bible and see for himself about the prophecies. So he knows that there's going to be true men of God that's going to be sent out. He said he gave apostles and prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. So he, they got to come. That's his word. He know God can't lie. He can lie, but God can't lie. So he knows that things are going to happen and things are going to um, come to pass. He tries to prepare for it by raising up false denominations and false doctrines in, in Christianity. So when the truth comes, it'll be a resistance because everybody is so content. Not, not everybody, but the people that are doing it, the, everybody that's doing it, they're content in, in, in the Christianity and the false Christian belief. So... When, when the truth comes, people are going to look at the truth as a lie and see the lie as a truth. That's the truth. That's why Paul said the way of truth will be evil spoken. They, they said, Peter and Paul was both talking about this. They said, P Paul said, as deceivers, but true. Then they said, the way of truth will be evil spoken of. So the, he, they're telling you, why, why would the way of truth be evil spoken of? How would people even have the audacity or have the ability to be like, the word of God is not the word of God? That's what they're saying. Or what you, he said they would not endure sound doctrine. Ain't that what they said? So how are they prophes how are they giving these prophecies of what is to come? Because God knows. And he knows that Satan is going to remember Paul told that Satan has ministers and he comes as the angel of light. So he knows that people are going to come and they're going to be deceivers. The Bible told you about wolves and sheep clothed in. So that's how it starts. So people get remember. Let me give you all a secret. Being a false Christian is easy than being a true one. It's way easier because you can still be the same way you are. It doesn't require no change. There's nothing spiritual that takes place. Right? Nothing spiritual that takes place. So it's easy to be a false Christian. You don't have to do anything. You don't got to read your Bible. You don't got to pray. You just got to show up to a church on Sunday, pay a little money. You know what I'm saying? Claim it on Facebook. Claim it on Instagram. You know, and that's it. You know, talk a little bit, you know, like a like a, a, a false Christian and, and you all set. That's all it is. You see? So people, that's easier than really having to, you know, uh, not sin and, and be in compliance and be obedient. It's easier. Why do you think a lot of people are homeless? Because it's easier than being responsible. It's easier than, than taking care of responsibilities and, and, and necessities and needs. A lot of people, you, you might look on and say, man, they homeless, they can just get a job or something, right? But a lot of people, it's easier just ask people for something and taking handouts. It's easier. See, it's a difference. So all I'm trying to show you is that the world, the world, you know, sees things differently. And that's why I'm telling you in false Christianity, it's easy to be that way. It's easy to be a, a, a false believer. It's easy to, to just go to church one day out of the week. Man, people got little, got Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, after school activity, you know, parent, like, you know, like, can you really imagine people, can you, can you be honest with yourself? Would it, would it, would it seem normal to see people having church every day? Would that seem normal? You got people who are looking for different churches because the so-called false pastor preaches too long. They want to find a, a church that doesn't, require you to be there and you know for three hours and they got all this traditional format you know stuff that's formal they don't some people don't like that stuff they so they go and find like a more uppity church a more laid back a more you know you even got pastors now that's why the bible say you know we ought to obey god than men and you know paul said you know you know we don't please men but god he's saying that the men pleasers are the people who are going to try to accommodate to you like hey i'm gonna get you out of here you know uh it's, it's, you know, we got an hour, you know, 30 more minutes and I'm, and I'm finishing up. It ain't no Holy Spirit involved. Because you see in the Bible, the Holy Spirit does, does it at will. And you see in today, 
people control what they want. They tell you what time it's going to open, what's going to occur. Right? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Sarah. That's what I'm saying. That's the fault. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I keep telling y'all I'm not stepping on these people's toes as far as what they believe, what they stand for. I'm just trying to show people the true way just in case they want to come and they want to be a part of, you know, this true life and to really know the truth of God's word. That's why I'm here. I heard that before, too. You know, be oh, yeah, you're too spiritual or you're, you know, you're holier than thou. You know what I'm saying? By doing what the word say, because you're not holier than thou. You're not spiritual when you're a false Christian. That's why I'm telling you, Paul said it. I keep y'all don't be listening to what I'm saying to you. He said the way of truth will be was spoken of. You can tell somebody what the Bible say right now. They're going to be like, uh, you know, I don't agree with that. Like they'll say they don't agree with what the Bible says. I'm telling but they claiming to be a Christian. I'm telling you because they wasn't brought to the Bible. It's so watery. It's so watered down out here that people believe it in all this stuff. And they can't. Then when you tell them what the Bible say, they want to get mad and argue and be like, you know, I don't I don't I don't I don't agree with that, though. Or I don't think that's what that means. I told Sarah earlier, I said, you got five cars coming to a red light and everybody stop. Everybody's and in, in they, they complete strangers and they in complete agreement with stopping the red light. Ain't nobody. No, I think it's not a red light. I think it means go. But it's the only book you open and people like the Bible. Oh, uh, I don't know uh, if that's if, if that's what that said. I, I think that that means. But nowhere else people act like that. Oh, I think the gas that go in my car is uh, water. I think that the oil that goes in my oil place is antifreeze. Like nowhere else are people playing games like that. But when it comes to the Bible, for some odd reason, right? It's so much controversy, so many arguments, so many debates. When it comes to that one, that, that one Bible. But everywhere else, people are like, oh, yeah, you know, this is what it says. And can't you guys read and you know, the library tell you to be quiet. You know, don't be on your cell phone. But nobody's in the library like, yeah, I'm on my phone because I don't think that sign means not to be on my phone. You see what I'm saying? But when it comes, but when it comes to when it comes to God, oh, it it, it don't mean that women can't preach. It, it that it, you do got to cut your hair, even though it doesn't say cut it. You know, why would he say it's a shame? It's a shame for people that's in the world. It ain't a shame. He telling you that nature teaches you. You're right. They ain't ashamed to no Christian. He ain't say a Christian. He ain't say brethren. He ain't say saint. He ain't say disciple. He didn't say God. He said nature. He said nature teaches you. Nature don't teach me. See the difference? So that's the reality. So that's all I'm trying to get y'all to understand and get y'all to see. That it's a big difference. Right? When you're living for God and you're living, you know, in the world, you're gonna make, you're gonna come up with this, you're gonna come up with your own stuff, your own beliefs, what you think and what you feel, and what you what you feel is 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 right and what you feel is wrong, and that's what happens, you know, with the Christianity, that they all believe, oh, you know, we're we're serving God. It's like they all act like they got their own version of the Bible, and it's only one version. That's how you know what God said is true. Because what, what else would make any sense? What else would make sense to have a thousand different denominations and there's only one Bible? Just think about it. That's like that's like me and my sister and brother having one mom and, and, and one dad. But for some reason, like I'm claiming a different type of man and different type of woman. And I only got one woman, one, one dad and one mom. Would that make sense? See what I'm saying? So you wouldn't claim, you know, different. Uh, you wouldn't claim to have a different mother and different father if you only have one. So why are they claiming different denominations when there's only one Bible? And nowhere in that Bible is it talking about different, you know, group of people, especially them claiming to be, um, you know, men and women of God. Think about it. So that clearly shows you that what everything that the Lord said was true. Everything, everything he told you was true. How the wolves clothing gonna come? They're gonna be liars, deceivers. You know they're gonna, you know, be wolves in sheep clothing. He told you everything. So that's how you know that the word is true because it doesn't make sense why we have, you know, the falsehood that we have today. Like, what are they gaining from all claiming to be Christians but having different backgrounds 
and our different denominations and nothing in the Bible that they can even go to to support what they even doing. It doesn't make any sense. Right. It doesn't make sense why there's Baptist people, Pentecostal, apostolic. It does not make sense. Nothing makes sense why people are claiming those things, especially when they can't be traced back to scripture. Why are you claiming those type of things when there's nowhere in the Bible that those things are, even exist? So what would be the point? You see, the point is that the word told you that it's from the doctrines of devils. They get to some spirits. That's a demon that's doing that. The only thing that would want God's word to be discredited and for us not to be unified and for us not to be together and for us not to be, you know, obeying the word as it was given to us is Satan. Right? For his purposes, his benefits. To keep us all separated and keep us not, you know, living for God. There'll be no other reason why that had to happen. Think about it. So there's nowhere where an apostolic person right now or Pentecostal or preparatory, it don't matter because they can say the day of Pentecost. It nowhere was tells the call. That's like that's like I met a Hebrews like guy. He was trying to tell me that it mentioned uh Job, it mentioned black in the Bible with Job. Job said that his skin was disease, his body was disease, right? And it said that the his boils and his different things that caused his body to be affected was the reason why his skin was blackened. Anytime the skin was mentioned as being blackened in the Bible, it was because of a, 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 a disease or some type of, you know, sickness or, or plague, right? So the Hebrews like, they use that. Not that it even said, like, because the guy kept saying black Jesus. I'm like, why do you keep saying black Jesus, right? He was like, oh, Jesus is black. I'm like, where does it say he's black at? You see what I'm saying? Like, they're going to make it be what they want to be because it suits them. They don't like white people and they want to believe in religion, right? That they can't get rid of. So they say, oh, black Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Oh, it's black Jesus. Like, how is it black Jesus? That's the point I'm trying to make. There's no such thing as a black Jesus. There's no such thing as a white Jesus. Black and white is not a race. You see what I'm saying? Like, when would they say, oh, you're white and you're black? They say African-American, Caucasian. The slang terminology is white and black. Like, what do you call an Asian person? Or what do you call a person... You know, that's 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 light skin. Like, I'm not black. Is my skin color black? Or will my skin color be brown? It's not black. You see what I'm saying? So you wouldn't say that I'm like, oh, I'm a black person. Like, like logically speaking, am I black? You know what I'm saying? Or is my skin brown? You know, with a reddish tone. So you wouldn't say I'm black. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, our skin is not black. You see what I'm trying to say? Some people might have black skin. But would everybody fit in that same category as, 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 as being black? No. That's the point I'm trying to make. So you see, that's the reality, brothers and sisters. That's how you got to understand it. They're, they're reaching. They're looking for something that's going to suit them and say, oh, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's, it's, it's the black Jesus. You know, like that's how they want to look at it. That's how they look at it. You know, that's what they want to believe. That's what they stand for. So all I'm trying to tell you is that where would that's what I'm trying to say, Sarah, you see what I'm trying to say? Like they say these things that don't make any, that's what I'm, that, look what Sarah just wrote. That's the point that I'm trying to make. They say these things and it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. That's the point. I'm, that's, that's all I'm just trying to say. That's the point I'm just trying to make. Like everybody has some color in their skin, right? It's like the world, like the world is sitting here. Like you got people from different countries. You know, that got different shades of skin and living in one country, just like just like America. So all I'm trying to say is that people are going to use that Bible because it's a it's a book that's full of mysteries and secrets. But you can understand the words, but you don't understand the meaning of the scriptures or what they're talking about. Because even when Jesus Christ was giving parables, Jesus Christ was using whole parables and they still didn't understand, you know, what he was saying. They didn't get it, you know, so he was like speaking in parables. And they still couldn't, they still couldn't get it. He was like, well, here, here, here's the story of the parable, you know, but they still couldn't get it. So that's the point I'm just trying to make, right? It's clearly saying in there that a man has long hair. So it's not a sin for a, 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 a child to have long hair. You see what I'm saying? Like it will be, people will be, a, people, the Bible is not designed to be argued. It's designed to be o obeyed and applied. So it's not designed for people to, it's not designed for when you read it 
It's like, oh, I think I think that, right? It's not designed for that. It's designed to be obeyed. It's designed to be, you know, to be read and to be received. That's it, right? It's not, it's no mistakes. And it's, it's not, it's the Bible, nowhere, they, they sit there and tell you not to argue and debate. So they're not going to allow arguments and debate. I got to get some, these bugs are biting me all on my legs. You know, it's not allowed uh, to be argued and debated, right? So they wouldn't, I got to get my hoodie too. It's not allowed to be um, argued and debated. It's just designed to be obeyed. So when people are using those different, um, you know, those different scriptures, it's, it's, it's designed to just to fit, to, to give them comfort. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, it's black Jesus. They never said Jesus is black. They go off of, you know, Bible verses that they might have had descriptions. Like people even use in, in, they even use in Revelations where it talks about his feet. Right. And his hair being like wool. And they say, OK, that right there. Like these people never go off of it actually saying, you know, what I'm saying that's like people be people saying that's like somebody thinking that they gonna get a, a certain amount of money and it never was written to them. They're going to have a certain amount of money. But they say, oh, yeah, I'm going I'm to get uh, twenty thousand dollars. Why? OK, I see twenty thousand. So you're going to make that just be for you. Like you just going to make it be for you. And that's all it is. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 Okay, hold, how am I do it? You gonna hold the phone? Oh, you want to Yeah. Oh, I ain't even thinking of video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You ain't getting no what's the name? What, baby? I could do it, but you're going to have to hold the phone for a second. Huh? I mean, you just got to hold it. <laughs> just got to talk to him real quick. Why I do that? If it's emergency, that's, I might got to... I got to do that real quick then. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Courtney need me to do something. That's important. Here, just here, this, you can just hold it. Don't show the what's name. God bless everyone. It's been so long since I've seen everyone. <laughs> I didn't even know he was making a video. I was with the kids, so I'm not sure. Let's read the comments and see if I can pick up on what's going on. Oh, hello. Who that, Brother Jeremy? God bless. Oh, God bless Sarah. God bless Justin. Y'all care so much for God's word, but you are an outband the scriptures that clearly simply tell you what to do. And make all excuses. <laughs> Robbie, you coming with that hammer, I'm telling you. <laughs> Y'all care so much for God's word. Oh, God bless Sarah. So I hope everyone's enjoying the teaching and enjoying the weather. It's a beautiful day outside. Yeah, if um, oh yeah, yeah, brother Ronald, he doesn't play in these teachings. It's serious. It's been getting more and more stricter and. You know, more and more strict, stricter, you know. Huh? Yeah, these, these teachings are serious, so, but they'll bless you if you really care and if you really are concerned, if you really, the one, no, not that one, the other one, the, the other one that was half full, the one I handed to you. You must have put it down. It was half full. He drank some of it already. Naomi did. Yeah, but if you really, you know, want to grow, you really want to <laughs> be blessed by those teachings, you will. Them things, for real, they cut you to the core. Not just the teachings, but 
You know, you ever had a one-on-one -on -one talk? They cut you to the core. Not in a bad way, though, but, you know, in just enough to help you get a clear understanding of where you stand. Because more than likely, you know, we all come from the same place. And, yeah. <laughs> so crazy i'm sorry guys i just wasn't prepared to take over <laughs> i didn't even know he was making the teaching he was little right right across the yard Man, I can only imagine how it was going. I guess it's kind of weird because I never come on um, Facebook Live ever. Like, I never usually come up here. So I'm used to more like interactions. <laughs> <laughs> That's for real. But one verse about hair with no instruction or detail how low to cut your hair or wear it. This is good. God bless, guys. Here you go. All right. You got it? Oh, can you spray some of that off on my legs? They was getting me over there. That's the reason why I came back. Only one on my arms. I could just wave my arms around, but they 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 biting me on my legs. Just don't hit the socks. So I can uh I don't wanna I gotta get back over there where I was at. I can watch the thing. Hmm. Yeah, so um, that's the point I was making is that y'all got to understand that, you know, they look they look at it today like you can just do whatever you want to do, you know, and live how you want to live. And that's what I was telling Jeremy on the phone today. I'm like, that's how they operate. That's what they're taught. You got to think the false Christian. Let me get the back. OK, hold on, hold on. OK, let me get right here. You can hit this arm a little bit because they probably try to bite me. Okay, not too much, bro. Right here? Okay, that, that's good. Rub that in. So I guess we'll just, um, we'll do them patties and the rest of the fries, right? Before we leave. So, this is what I want everybody to understand. That in 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 Christianity, they're not teaching you the truth of God's word. They're just happy that you're a part of their church and you know their ministry and you know just all those things. They they're not they're not they don't care about you. That's why you don't know where your pastor lives at. Most of y'all don't even know where your pastor lives at. Most of y'all can't just pop up there. It's not like that. You're not a family, right? That's the reality. It's like a gang. It's like a cult. Right. So that's why there's no love. That's why every person that claims to be a Christian in your church, you don't got their cell phone number. You can't come to their house. So everything that the Bible teaches you, you don't even see that, you know, being manifested, you know, in your own, you know, so-called church. Think about it. You don't like people don't even want to be your friend because they'll look at you. These these fall church today, the people will judge you the way that the, the rest of the world judges you. Women won't even let certain, certain people come to their house because they're worried about their husband liking you or looking at your body. I'm telling you, like, all the stuff that people go through as far as, like, what they're affected by in the world, the false Christians are affected by those things as well. It's the same exact thing. Nothing is different. You see what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of women won't even say, hey, girl, come over to my house because she got, you know, her man, they got too many problems. 
She got trust issues. Like it's all, everything is the same that you see in the world when it comes to lust and jealousy and all that stuff. It's the same thing in these false churches. That's why people are not together. They're not close. They're not friends. You know, they don't want to be friends because, you know, they have those same, you know, problems, them same challenges that the world has. They're not trying to get to know you. They're just trying to go there and let you see their outfit, their heels, their dress, their suits, you know, everything. Like, that's why they're there. They're not there to, you know, be friends with everybody. They're not there to, you know, because it's the same thing as the world. It's like when you go to work and stuff like that, like people just going there, to, you know, get that paycheck. They got to kind of socialize a little bit. They know how to they know how to fake, you know, pretend and stuff like that. So that's how it is in these fall churches. They're not looking to go there every day. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't designed. Think about it. You know, if, if, if somebody starts something, right, they're going to make it the way they wanted to make it. Like, you look at Crips, you look at Bloods. They wear red and one wear blue. Like, it was made that way. It's not for discussion. If, if that gang say, this is the color that you got to wear. Motorcycle gang, this is our jackets, our leather vests, you know, our patches. Like, that's what it is. If you don't do that, you're not a part of it. You understand? So they created Christianity to, to accommodate you. They, they make you go to church on Sunday when you off of work. So there is no pushing yourself because you wouldn't push yourself throughout the week. You understand? That's why Bible study never be packed like Sunday, like Sunday service. Because Bible study, people be getting off of work late. Some people got to work a double, you know, or they just they don't got time. You know, they want to wind down, as they say in the world. So they don't got time. Like Bible study never is as packed as Sunday service. Ain't nobody trying to see you every day of the week. You know, people don't even read their Bible like that. People barely even, you know, talk about God like that. You know, you only got a few of the, of the, the extreme, you know, false Christians. That's God everything and Jesus everything, you know, and, and they still worldly. But majority of the false Christians, you know, they, they put that, you know, that Bible has got dust on it, you know. Or they reading little stories here and there and calling it a day. That's the reality. So you see, it was all designed. It was it was created for it to not be a burden to you. It was created not saying that being a Christian is a burden. I'm saying this is people that's believing something that's not real. So they designed it Sunday, you know, come looking good, you know, pay a little money. Like they got the whole system to make you really feel that you were part of something. It's like you didn't pay the money. Well, first of all, they wouldn't be able to stay in business because God is not with them. People are always like, what if you, what, what the, the, how the lights going to stay on? As, where's God at? You see what I'm saying? Like the, the, the person that's a false Christian, they don't believe in God. Their, their miracles is what a doctor can do through them. They, what they believe is that God will work through the doctor. That's what they've been taught. And they're comfortable thinking that. That's like y'all like don't understand. Y'all keep on like criticizing these people who don't have the faith. But they have belief in what was told to them. That's like a lot of religions don't believe. Religions don't even know about demons being casted out. So you got many people that's in the, across the world who believe in all different types of stuff. They don't even get demons casted out of them. So they just live with them demons. They live with them spirits inside of them and they contend. So that's the point that I'm trying to make to you is that like people not looking for those miracles. Somebody OK with walking with a limp. People OK walking with a cane. People OK with having bad eyesight. They just put glasses on. They put contacts in. They're not like on their knees every day praying to God. They don't believe in God. So if you don't believe in God and you have something that only God can help you with, what would you do if you don't believe in God? You got to adjust. You got to go get glasses. You got to go, you know, even people that's blind, they go get canes and they walk around with them. They learn how to listen to stuff more now. Now they lost their eyesight. Like people are not living miserable, right? Living that miserable you know, suffering, they adjust and so they can't adjust anymore. You see what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, like, that's the truth. So people are going to always look at it that way because they always there's, there's all if you look at you look at Walmart and uh, CVS and Rite Aid, like those 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 drug stores, they be full of stuff. People got issues, but they're trying to make things that give you relief. A Christian don't need none of that type of stuff. But they're trying to, they making, they get, they got Tylenol, extra strength, Advil, Bayer. I mean, they got everything. Like people got so many problems apart from God. All you got to do is go look at it. Go look at a, a pharmaceutical store. 
and you see how much problems people got. Women, vaginas, you got problems. They got to wear summer. They got to get summer's eat. They got a douche. Like, all different types of stuff. Like, woman want to fornicate, she going to have problems with her vagina. She going to have problems with orgasm. She going to have problems with pregnancy. They have all type of issues because of sin. That stuff all comes from because of sin. I'm telling you. That's why they have all them problems. They got to take cranberry pills and all this and that because they're living in sin. You know? So that's how you got to understand it. And that's how you see it. So all I'm trying to tell y'all is that everything you see today in the false churches, it was designed. So let me see what I got because I'm about to lose the sunlight. Okay. You are so much, uh, y'all care so much for God's word. But you are not obeying the scriptures that clearly and simply tell you what to do. You all make excuses. You pick and choose. So what I'm saying here is that like just like how the guy was asking about the hair, like there is no like description that talks about the hair. Right. No description. I wrote but one verse about hair with no instructions or details how low to cut your hair or wear it. You are trying to press what you feel about it and y'all create what you want and you push it but the one thing that gives you clear directions you question it you of the devil so what am i saying here exactly what i just said like think about it y'all how are they so big on wearing your hair when like they don't even claim to be church of god they don't they never what this is what i'm trying to say they never seen what they do today, look, listen, this is going to blow your mind, but I want y'all to slow your mind down and listen to what I'm telling you, just to show you how it's of the devil. They got this big thing on this hair thing, right? How your hair should be, okay? Without no instructions on how to wear it. So even though if, if, if they say cut your hair, they're not safe in how they're wearing their hair because there's no way where it says that their hair is safe, right? There's no instructions. Like even if, if a man come to you right now, and he got his hair cut a certain way, right? He can't tell you that he's safe by wearing his hair that way because there's no instructions for him to even wear his hair that, that in that way, right? It don't say wear your hair bald. It don't say wear your hair short. It don't say wear it semi-short. It doesn't say, you know, it doesn't say anything, right? It's that one verse that's, that got a woman verse, a woman uh, talking about talking a woman before it. Then it talks about nature and man. Then it goes back to the woman. No instructions. Clearly, it was more about the woman than it was about the man. Right? Now, they're going to tell you what they want. Why? Because of what was told to them. Okay? Now, so when you look at these people that's telling you, oh, you know, this is, this is, this is how it's a, it, it has to be. They're telling you that from themselves. Okay? How do they look at one verse that doesn't have any direction, any instructions on how to wear your hair, but they don't see the verses where they, they can't, they don't see one verse where, where a Christian went in a church and had a collection plate and put money in it. They don't, what, who made that? Who, who built the collection plates to look at the way they look like? Who built, who did it that way? Who, who built the collection plates? See what I'm trying to say, y'all? Y'all not hearing me. Listen what I'm saying to y'all. They talking about hair. And there's no instructions on how to cut your hair. So where are they getting these instructions from what they're doing? If they're so adamant about cutting your hair and obeying what the Bible say, it's not even a verse to even obey about your hair. This is the reality. Who told them that when it, it's, it's tithes and offerings that they're going to send out a, me, a, a, a metal plate or a basket to go around and collect your money? Where? And then let me ask you a question. I have never been to a church. I'm saying myself. Listen to what I'm about to say to you. I have never been to a church. I'm talking about growing up. Where I heard them say during offering time, give you 10%. I, I never heard it. I never heard it. Like, I didn't heard people, like, speak on it and, like, like be like, oh, you're supposed to give 10%, but if not, you just get what you want. But if it was a sin, why would you allow them? Listen to what I'm trying to say. See, I don't, nobody wants to hear what I got to say. If it was something that was meant to do. Why wouldn't they push that every time it was tithes and offerings? Why wouldn't they push it? If you had to give 10%, why would they give you a pass? Why would they not chastise you and admonish you for not doing what God calls you to do? They sitting here telling you to cut your hair and you got to wear it short. And they're all, oh, you know, cut your hair, cut your hair, cut your hair, wear it short, you know. But why are they not pushing the issue when people are not giving 10% at church? 
You see what I'm saying? Because there's no Bible verse that says you're supposed to as a Christian. I'm telling you, they can't push it. Because if a person was to question it, they wouldn't be able to produce it as a Christian. They can only go to the Old Testament. And they don't want to make you not come to a church. And they don't want to make you, you know, seem like it's all about money, but it is. So all I'm trying to tell you is that why don't they push the issue that you should be given 10% no matter what it is? I have never seen that. And I've been in many churches growing up in my life. I never seen them be like, hey, it's offering time. Get your 10%. Put that, get that 10% out here. I never seen them do that before. Never. See the point that I'm trying to make? I never seen them do that before. So why are they not pushing? If, 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 if you got to give your 10%, if they're using Malachi, right? Which is talking about the Jews, not no Christian. Will the man rob God? He said, why are you rob? Robbing tithes and offerings. Why are they not pushing the issue? Why they allow people to put quarters and ones and twenties in a collection plate? Because that's what's keeping their lights on. It ain't about no 10%. It's about all these members giving something to contribute to keeping these lights on and taking care of that, that, that pastor, not the church. Because in the book of Acts, the Bible said that people laid the money at the apostles' feet. Not one person, not the pastor, not the pastor's wife, but the apostles' feet. That's more than one person. And it said that distribution was made to all that was in need. Then in the next chapter, there was a man asking Peter and John for money. John, Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. But we just read where they laid money at their feet. And the next time he's telling you he ain't got no money. So clearly that money wasn't just going in his pocket. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, this is the point that I'm trying to make. So where are they getting these instructions from? And they're telling you about cutting your hair. Man, that's because that's what, what was told to them. They tell you about cutting your hair. But they walking around doing what they want to do and then trying to use a verse that don't even tell you about cutting your hair to base off of them being spiritual and self-righteous. Think about it. Who told them why they not pushing the issue of uh, paying your tithes and offerings? These churches are not these. A lot of churches are not getting their 10 percent of their fake tithes and offerings. They're not getting it. They're not even paying tithes and offerings properly as the Jews did. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what a Jew did or what a Jew. I'm not Jewish. I'm not a Jew. I'm a Christian. But I can tell you from Scripture that what they're doing today and how the Jews did it, and that's what they're supposed to be fake copying, they're not doing it correctly. So why are the, 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 the pastors not pushing the people to do it properly? Think about it. See the point I'm making? That's how you look at this moon right here. Let me show you this moon. Hold on. Y'all see that moon? That's like, that's why the Bible said that day without excuse. Like, look at, I mean, just look at it, though. It's just out there in the sky. Who put it out there? You know what I'm saying? That's why I be trying to tell Jeremy, and I'm like, listen, when y'all understand, I got to put this hoodie on. Who is this? That's what I'm telling you. Uh, that's what I'm telling you, Justin. That's what I just said. I'm telling you. Because when you start to question it, they're going to be like, well, I really don't have nowhere to show you as a Christian. And, it's a, and then cause if they try to push the issue of the Old Testament law, then they gonna they can't say that we're under grace. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's what I'm that's that's what I'm saying. Just that's exactly what that. Oh, hold on. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you all that like they really can't they really can't push it too deep because it's going to become too questionable. People are going to be like, hold on. You know what I'm saying? Like you taking all my money. And then they'll start doing research. So they just they, they just make it like part of like their tradition. And like they have, you know, something they use, you know, in the scriptures to make you believe that it's something that you should be doing. You know what I'm saying? That's how they get you. They're like, oh, you know, well, it says right here in Malachi. You know, that's how they get you. But 
they don't push the issue like like I like you know, like Justin was saying, they don't push the issue because if you start digging and you start doing investigation, you're gonna see that something is wrong. You know, it's corrupted. You're gonna say, hey, this this ain't right. You know, because I don't see where no no Christian did these things that you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? And then they they can't support it. They can't push it. Because if they try to say, well, Moses said it, that's the law. And all these false Christians are talking about, you know, uh, that, that we're not a lawnmower, we're under grace. I'm saying that's, what, that, that's the truth, but I'm saying that's what they pushing. So it wouldn't make sense to push that that narrative that, okay, it's grace and not the law. Then why are you upholding the law as far as me paying tithes and offerings? Only for tithes and offerings, but you're not upholding the law for anything else. You see what I'm saying? So it, it becomes too questionable. So that's why it's just it's just tradition. That's why when you go to these churches, they're like, oh, it's offering time. They ain't saying nothing. They just passing that plate around. Because if you start questioning it, they can't answer it. Because it wasn't for Christians to do, but it was for the Jews to do. That's why you don't see nowhere in the New Testament where a Christian paid $1 to a tithe and offering. That's the whole purpose of, of Christ dying for us. Like, they so stupid and foolish. Like, the reason of him dying was the sacrifice. The reason why you were doing a sacrifice and all that stuff it was to, you know, symbolize the sins and, you know, the bad things you was doing and, you know, making amends and different things like that for your wrong. When Christ came, the Bible talks about, you know, that he won't have uh he don't he don't delight in in, in, in um sacrifices anymore. In those things. That's why there's no point to do it no more. Like they don't understand, like that's why I'm telling you, they built the whole system, not even understanding the actual system. They just copy something. It's like when you look at a fake like a like a fake designer bag, they didn't go to Louis Vuitton or Gucci and figure out how they made this. They 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 they, they leather. They don't got real leather. They ain't going down and getting leather from them people. You know what I'm saying? They just copying what it looked like on the outside. That's why it falls apart. That's what I just said, Justin. You know I ain't gonna tell no lie up here. I told you, all my years of living, I ain't never been to no church where they tell you you better give that ten percent. They say it behind closed doors, but I ain't never. And even Justin saying it, right? We've been living for a while on this earth. I've been, I grew up in the church back. I ain't never heard them say that. That's as you get old. Like that's like them back. That's like them behind the door conversations. Like, oh, you got ten percent. But why they not pushing it though? I ain't never been. I done been to multiple churches growing up. I ain't never heard them people ever be like, get your ten percent. My mama always give me a dollar. What I'm giving ten percent for, or what I'm giving money for. I ain't got. I ain't had no job as no kid. She give me some change, a dollar, you know, whatever. And I ain't never seen my mom give no 10% growing up. I ain't never seen my mom put in no $10,000 in it or 5000 whatever the case was. I never seen it. You know what I'm saying? It was always like whatever she had in her pocket, she just ball it up and put it in the plate. I'm talking about that's me growing up. So what I'm saying is, just like Justin said, he picked back up what I'm telling y'all. They don't push it because they can't push it. It was just part of a tradition that was told to them. Ain't no Christian paid no tithes and offers. I'm telling you. That's why you can't find it. Listen to me. When you go on Google, right, and you type in Christian paying tithes and offers, I'm going to tell you right now what's going to pop up that's not tithing and offering. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Giving out of necessity, right? And God, um, don't give grudge out of necessity. That's the only thing that's going to pop up. That's because a man put that in there to be connected. What they feel is tithing and offering. Y'all better stop being deceived by people controlling the narrative of things. Don't be deceived. The, the whole internet, when you look up God's word on the internet, are for people who are trying to connect the dots with false doctrine. So when you go in there and be like, hey, Google, can Christians sin? It's going to be, I'm telling you, you're not going to, there's no Bible that's going to say, yeah, we live in sin. They're not going to say it. It's going to be somebody giving you a Bible commentary telling you that living in sin is normal. I'm telling you. And they're going to use a, a verse to support it. Whoa, look, 1 John 1 and 8 says this. Then the rest of John uh, books say, don't sin. You see what I'm saying? They don't. Remember, Jesus Christ was talking plainly to people. And they could not understand what he was saying. Even his own disciples. The Bible said, get them understanding. Paul said, ever learning, but never able to come to knowledge of the truth. People do not understand what they're reading. That's the reality. You got people that, like, how do you expect people to, to accept the Bible and understand what the Bible say? When they do things that don't make sense in their life. People drink liquor and beer. 
No, there's no nutritional value in that. It's poison. There's nothing inside of liquor and beer that's going to help your body. It's not going to hydrate you. It's not going to, you know, add minerals and, and, and vitamins and nutrients. It's not going to help you to, you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing in there. It's like walking through a, a, a forest of smoke and just inhaling it. Like there's no benefit of walking through a forest fire. So what's the benefit of smoking and, and what's the benefit of drinking? Think about it. You're just putting smoke. You're just damaging your body. You're talking about, oh, there's no, there's no cases of people smoking marijuana and having this. It don't matter. It don't make sense. Talking about. Who, we, always, we, look, we always talk about what it don't look like. People, there's, there's accidents every day. People don't have seatbelts on. That don't make you put your seatbelt on. Because you don't wonder what's about. It's not cool. You see what I'm trying to say? Except don't be making no sense, man. That's the point that I'm trying to make. That's the reality. That's how you got to understand. That's how you got to see it. People don't like wearing seatbelts. Because it's going to protect them from not dying. They don't believe it. They believe it's a conspiracy from the government. You know what I'm saying? Like, people want to be stupid. So you can't expect people to want to live for God because that book is full of knowledge and wisdom. It's telling you, love your neighbor as yourself. People saying, stop snitching. Man, somebody know if they mama right now called. Listen, you in Hawaii right now, right? You in Hawaii on a vacation. Your mom call you and say, somebody trying to break in my house. What you going to tell her to do? Call the Ghostbusters? You going to say, call the police. Like, people don't, that's the, that's the way the world is. Why you think so many guys are in prison right now? Because when they get killed or when something happens to their loved one, the family members are not living by that made up code. That's why it's always changing. The street code. You're a snitch, you do it, you snitch, you do it, you snitch, you do it, you snitch, you, snitch, you do that. You know what I'm saying? Like they change because it, it's, it's made by the delusion and destruction. So it's never going to have a solid foundation. It's created by darkness. That's why people, oh, you know, I don't mess with the police. Man, you got to call the police to do, if you get in an accident you want and you want to get an insurance claim. Like, stop playing games, man. You got to deal with them folks. You ever been to court? You ever been to j jail, probation, anything? You got to deal with police, man. That's the facts. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, the world is just so, the world hates good so bad. And police represent that. So they despise them. Like, I don't like police. Why? Every cop you don't like. You know, that's, that's, it's just like racism. You look at every white black person. I don't, I don't like white people. You don't like, you. so you met every white person that's on this earth? Nah, but the ones I did meet, like, come on, man, they say the same thing about you. All the black people they met tried to rob them or steal their goods. Like, what's, what's the difference? You see what I'm saying? Like, people don't even want to embrace that reality because we far from God. That's the truth. The Bible say love your neighbor as yourself. Well, don't love them. And then what happens? Don't forgive a person. Then what happens? Like, hey, come on, man. You know war don't solve problems. You know when you murder somebody, that don't get rid of the problem. Because you done took somebody that somebody cared for. So it don't stop. It's a domino effect. So you got to think reality. That's all I'm trying to say. Like people be thinking stupid and talking stupid. Like you got to look. Ain't nothing wrong with that Bible. You just don't want to live it. Because it feels better to live in delusion. And it feels better to live in insanity. That's the truth. People want to live life like, like there's no tomorrow. And like we just here with no purpose on this earth. Like we just on this earth. We can look up in the sky and see a moon and everything. We just here. Doing what? It's the beginning, it's the end to everything. I think we just here, just 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 soldiering on just for no reason. So they just they just pump fake and making the Bible to control us. Ain't nobody controlling nothing. The whole world don't even believe in the Bible. And it's not forced upon nobody. What government forcing the Bible? They don't even obey the Bible. The government's in here telling you that it's illegal to kill, right? What's our laws in our country? You can't sell drugs. You can't kill. So then why are you allowed to go watch it in the movie theater? You see what I'm trying to say? So don't talk. I don't want to hear nothing about no, no government and, and these people making the Bible. It's a white man religion. What, what white man is obeying it? What black man is obeying it? What nation is obeying the Bible? That's all I want to know. What nation? Because there's strip clubs all over the world. There's violence. There's everything. The Bible tells you to abstain from all appearances of evil. That means anything that even look like evil, you're supposed to stay away from it. The Bible say, be not conformed to the world. You know what conform means? To partake, to do, to be a part of. So that means the world say, yeah, don't wear Walmart shoes. That's lame. That's corny. You conform it to the world. If the world say, wear skinny jeans, you're conforming. 
If the world said you got to get a BBL, that's conforming. We're not supposed to do that as believers. That's why so much pressure on everybody. Why you think? Why you? Why you think everybody wants to rob and they want to steal? Because the world is telling you, it's people that have this money and these reputation, these platforms that's telling you that that's what life is about. You got to get this. You got to get that. If you don't got this watch, you ain't nobody. If you ain't riding foreign, then you're born. If you ain't got this Rolex, you ain't nobody. The world telling you that. That watch in Walmart tell the same time that a Rolex, that a Rolex tell. That car that, that you can buy from Honda is going to drive the same way that, 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 that uh, Mercedes drive. The world is telling you that you're of this category when you have these things. The world is telling you that you ain't nobody if you have these things. That's facts. You see? So you're governed by what the world says. That's the point I'm trying to make to y'all. That's why I don't listen to nothing they're talking about. They can't tell me nothing. You got people that's living like crash dummies, man. And trying to act like they about to give you some wisdom. Can't give me no wisdom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to advise yourself. That's the truth. You see? So that's all I'm just trying to explain to y'all. That's how you got to look at it. And this is the world that we live in. People want to, because we have a conscience, we know right from wrong. So that's why everybody wants to portray being a good person, even when they're not being a good person. You got people saying, telling you, oh, I don't curse. But then they'll listen to curse words. Or people might don't even listen to curse words, but they'll do things. All I'm trying to say is that everybody that lives apart from God always try to find a way to make themselves seem like they're not, you know, uh, uh, a bad person. But nobody is, is judging their life according to what the Bible say. Even those who are in Christianity, the false Christians, they don't even look at what the Bible says as far as like, they look at what Christianity says as far as their life. I'm telling you. That's why they always ask you, what's your church home? Do you pay tithes? Who's your pastor? You know, well, what's your covering? Like they, they, they said, I remember a long time ago they asked me, what's my covering? I'm like, what's it? What do you mean, what's my covering? That ain't even in the Bible, you know, as a Christian. You see what I'm saying? Like they're governed by their own rules and regulations that they created. So they're never going to see themselves as being who they truly are in God's eyes. They're not going to see it. They think that God seems the way they see themselves. They don't think that uh, that that they are who they are because they don't believe in the Bible. They're doing everything that Christianity tells them to do. So they're good. That's what I'm trying to make. Okay, let's move on. So. Okay. I wrote down, is everyone a Christian? Right? That's what I wrote down. Let me see. Let me put this up real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. Is everyone a Christian? How do you know? So I wrote down, is everyone a Christian? Right? And how do you know? You know, so let me ask y'all, this is what I'm asking y'all. If you look around you today, would you say that everybody is a Christian? Like, would you, like, would you say, okay, this person is a Christian? Can, can, can everyone on the earth claim to be a Christian? Yes or no? No. Why do we know that? Because what the Bible tells us that's required of being a Christian, right? So how do we know these things? Because of what the word says. <clears throat> that's how we know. Okay, but but listen, this is why I'm asking y'all. So y'all said no. So but so then why can then why are people able to pay tithes and offerings? You know, ask tithes and offerings. You know, go to church on Sunday. Then when nowhere says that, if you're saying that everyone and it, you didn't you didn't say anything wrong, Justin. But I'm just saying, if you're saying that everyone can't be no Christian, then why are people allowed to ask you for tithes and offerings? You see what I'm saying? See, like Justin, Justin didn't answer wrong, but he answered because he know what the he knows what the words say or what he's been taught. But it's the point I'm trying to make too. But if you were to look at <clears throat> those who claim to be Christians, they're going to say, "Oh, this is what we think. This is what we think. Is what we think." But like, this is a religion. It's not about what you think. It's about what the religion says. Like that. That's the simplest. That's just like that's just like if you look at the laws in our in our country in America, you can't say. You know, I feel 
that it's not bad to murder somebody. I feel it's not bad to sell drugs. Like, you can't say that. A law is a law. That's why it's called a law. Right? And if you break the law, then they're going to arrest you and you go before a court or a magistrate or whatever. So that's how you know that things are, are what they are because it's set in stone. So, like, how are we how are we able to understand what laws are and understand to obey laws and rules and regulations? But then when it comes to the Bible, now we want to have talks about is murder wrong? Like, you see what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm, like think about it. If you if you know in our country that you can't break these laws, like you can't speed, you can't drink and drive, you can't do all these things. Right. Like there's no question about those things because they're enforced by by humanity, by mankind is what I meant to say. They're forced by mankind. So because the Bible is not forced, you know, like physically, people th can just get away with it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's no big deal. But nobody can commit a crime and say, oh, yeah, you know, it's not a bad thing because the cop going to be, you know, about to put you in handcuffs. You see what I'm trying to say? So because it's not it's not no physical punishment that comes from somebody not doing what the Bible says or, or not obeying God's word. They think that it's OK because it's not the same as the laws of our nation, where if you break them, then they're going to send police after you, you know, to arrest you and take you to jail. So you see people know they can get away with not believing in, I mean, not obeying what the words say or arguing, debating it. You can't debate if you just rob somebody. You can't debate when the police come and say, I don't think what I did was wrong. I don't think that that was really a robbery. Like you can't say that. But when it comes to the Bible, I don't think the Lord is. I don't think the Bible is saying that. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, that's how you know, like nowhere else are they doing that. But when it comes to God's word. Nowhere else is there so much controversy, so much conversation. But when you when, when you use the Bible, oh, no, you know, I think the Bible is saying there, you don't. So so when they say don't rob a bank and you go into a bank and say, give me all your money and the police come to arrest you. Like, why don't bank robbers walk out of a bank and just say, oh, I don't think that it was wrong. Like, how come that way of thinking is is, is not acceptable in the eyes of the world? But then. I can't understand your message, boo. Um, uh, that way of thinking is not a, is not acceptable. But how come when it comes to God, everybody now you know is illiterate, or they can't really understand? You see what I'm trying to say? That's how you know it's powerful, because you never see people act that way for any other thing but the Bible. You don't even see other religions where they're even mentioning like Allah is not real. Like nobody even cares. I'm telling you. But you see movies all the time. They're talking about, is God real? It, did Jesus really like the movie where they made where is God? What is it? Was God dead or whatever he made? He was trying to prove that. How can Christ be hung on the cross and all this type of stuff? Like where are the movies about Buddha and Allah? And I mean, that's worldwide. That's globally known. Like why are nobody interested in making movies about those different religions? Because Satan know they're not real. That's the truth. Satan don't care about stuff that people made up he only care about the truth that's going to receive let you receive salvation that's why you see so much controversy so many lies and so many different denominations in the in the, the false christian faith you got people that claim to be christians and they live like the rest of the world you know that they believe in that they different because they go to church on sunday and look this is i'm gonna tell you something that's so real i met the hebrews are like guy in walmart and I met this lady, she was she was Baptist in Walmart. So both were from both were claiming to be of God, right? And they were like, What are you? I'm like, I'm a Christian. That's what the Bible says, you know? And he was talking about how like all the Christians fought in these wars. I'm like, they wasn't Christians. Like, I don't care what's on the internet. Ain't nowhere in scripture. Ain't nowhere in scripture. Man, Colleen, you about an hour late, brother. <laughs> that brother said, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here, bro. Like, what you felt? He took a nap? That brother just now responded. All right. I was, so I'll get back to it in a second. But listen, so he was saying about, like, how all the Christians fought in these wars. And I'm like, I don't know what wars you're talking about. Because, you know, when I look at the holy brethren that came before me, we ain't fighting no wars. The Bible say Jesus got, uh, got, he got hit. They put crowns on his head. Stephen got stoned. And they both said, forgive them for not knowing what they do. The Bible tells us clearly not to be brawlers. 
you know, not to uh, to be brawlers, not to, to kill, you know, to turn a cheek. So there's no way we're going to fight in no wars. Now, if you got somebody that's claiming to be a Christian, you know, and they not, then they might have fought in some wars, but not not nobody living for God. A true Christian will fight in no war because we can't we can't kill anybody. And we're not supposed to be brawlers or violent. The Bible said we're supposed to be peacemakers and to love all honor all men. So we're never going to be fighting in no wars. So, that, so whether somebody, that's like the Waco, Texas guy. He was claimed to be like a prophet from God. And he got an 80-year-old woman pregnant. Like where in the Bible would we have done something like that? You see what I'm trying to say? Like they can, like they can claim what they want to claim. The Bible never says that people are going to claim it. And that's what it says to try the spirit to make sure it's of God. The Bible says, you know, the tree by the fruit that it bears. The Bible never say people are going to walk around claiming to be false Christians. It says you're supposed to try them. It tells you if any man claims to be a brother, is a fornicator, an extortioner, a drunkard, a reller, it says such a one I have to eat with. So the Bible is telling you this is how it's supposed to be. This is how you know who is who. It's not telling you wait for somebody to come and tell you that they're, they're not doing what's right or they're a false brethren. It tells you how to spot a false brethren. Or a false sister. It tells you how to fought a, a spot a woman she clothing, how to spot a false, uh, um, you know, a false believer. It's telling you what a, a false believer would do and what a true believer would do. It never tells you people gonna walk around and say, "Hey, I'm a false prophet." Who gonna do that? Bar Jesus didn't call himself a false prophet. Paul called Bar Jesus a, a false prophet because he twist, he preached a different type of gospel. That's how he was able to call him that. You see what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so in it, it um this is what I was saying, Keely. That verse, there's nowhere in the New Testament. This is what this is what y'all gotta learn to separate. When you type in when you first of all, nobody should be going on Google looking up anything about the Bible. Because Google is not the Bible. The Bible is the Bible. If we're going to get the salvation the same way that Paul, Peter, and all the other brothers did, they didn't have no internet. Internet is a worldly source of information. That comes from the world. So God is not, when you're going on Google, you're not talking to God. When you go to Google, that is information that was put up there by people that's in the world. They they don't care where it's coming from. You can look up there right now and say, hey, is God a man or is God a woman? You're going to see somebody writing that God is a woman. You can say, hey, was Jesus tall or was he short? Somebody going to create in their imagination how he was short and how he was taller. You could say, "Hey, the the donkey that Jesus Christ rode on, um, was it was it was it yellow or was it brown?" Somebody going to come up with some imaginable reason why it was brown and why it was yellow. You understand what I'm saying? Only on the internet. You're not going to find that in the Bible. God's word is in the Bible, nowhere else. You understand? Even if we're not, even if a person claims to be sent from God, then they should only be continuing what the word of God say. Not adding, not making up, not inventing their own thing, but continuing what the words say. It's supposed to be a continuation from what we read in, in the New Testament. That's it. So but what I'm telling you is that when you go, Satan uses the Internet. So when you go on the Internet, you're going to find all these denominations, all these churches. So oh, let me. So back what I was saying, this is what I was saying. So I met the Hebrews like guy, the Hebrews light, and I met the Baptist woman. Look what I told him. I said, the word Sunday is not in the Bible, right? Look what the guy said. It went over his head, right? Look what the guy said. The guy said, wait, God made the world and, and it's seven days. So what, it, you see what I'm saying? Like it went over, like I'm telling you. Huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I was I was talking to the Hebrew, the Hebrew, the Hebrews like guy and the Baptist lady. And she was saying she I was like, you know, I was like, you know, the word I was like, you know, the word of Sunday is not in the Bible. And like even when I was talking to Courtney, we, we both were saying like it was going over their head. Like they didn't understand like the word like the guy is saying, well, seven days, it has to be Sunday. You see what I'm trying to say? He he talking about he was a bishop, Hebrews light. It, he didn't understand. I'm like the word Sunday is not a biblical word. That's just like if you said like Tupac, like he had Tupac on his shirt. I'm like, why are you wearing Tupac on your shirt? Oh, he made a song about God. I'm like, brother, come on, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You know, the professor, they know God and works to deny him. Being a bomb of disobedience of every good work represent. Like, come on, man. That's in the book of Titus, man. <laughs> like, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is foolishness. You know, this man ain't living for God. So anyway, um, so he would say he was a bishop. So I kept saying to him and the woman, I'm like, don't y'all know that the word Sunday is not in the Bible? Like, I'm telling you, y'all are not going to heaven. I don't care what, look, I'm not here to, all, all I know is they going, they going, God going to make it to where this world hear me. And when they come for them to die and they go before him, they going to remember what I told them. Sunday is not in the Bible. You're not getting a pass from God. You think I'm out here speaking on my own? You think I'm out here just telling you this stuff because I feel good? You know what I'm saying? I want to just, I want to just be controversial. I'm telling you what you can see for yourself. You think that God going to give you the pass? That's why he ain't giving you the pass now. You know them words ain't in the Bible. Ain't no Sunday in the Bible. That was created by Constantine. Y'all better do y'all research. Y'all research everything else. So when I kept saying that they didn't get it, it was going over their head. It's too deep. I'm telling you. They didn't understand it. They so delusional. He was like, so, but the, the world was made in seven days. And he's like, you know, the world, God uh, completed the world in seven days. Right? I'm like, the word Sunday is not in the Bible. So the day, this day of the week right now, how we, how they call it Saturday, and it, it's the sixth day of the week, right? This could be the second day of the week. How do we know? How do we know, um, Colleen? How do we know, uh, Jeremy, Justin? How do we know? How would you know what this day is unless you talk to the creator who made the day? Remember, no matter how many generations have passed on this day today, whatever day it is, it has stayed the same in God's eyes, but it has changed with man. Is that facts or fiction? Okay? So I'm, I'm asking y'all, how do we know that today, how is how are we saying today is the sixth day of the week? Who came up with that? Man, that's what I'm telling you, Justin. We don't know. That's why they're talking about the Sabbath day is Saturday. How? Saturday's not even the biblical word. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to play it. Jeremy, what I, I keep telling you, Sarah, what I keep telling y'all, we undefeated. We undefeated. That's why they can't defeat me because they can't, they don't make any sense. I don't want to hear no Jehovah Witness. I don't want to hear seven day Adventists. Y'all, that stuff came from the internet. Everything that they speak is from the, is from Google. These are WW dot generation of people that go on Google. They can't, where, where are they getting that Sunday and Saturday stuff from? Saturday is the Sabbath. From where? Where in the Bible does it say Saturday period? You, you can't even go back to the Old Testament. Talking about the, what the Jews did. The Jews, they never say no Saturday. What are you talking about? You got that from Google, man. Especially if you're in my generation, you got that from Google. I just told you Google was designed to create what's not in the Bible. Because you can't find it in Scripture. That's what I'm telling you, Justin. We, we, we know that. That's what I'm telling you. They knew what it was. You know why they knew? And you know why it's not written in the Bible like that? Because it said, don't give what's holy to dogs. Nor cash proper for swines. So many things were secretive. And the only ones who were spiritual, that was in connection with God, knew what day that Sabbath was. The rest of the world didn't know what they were. Why would the rest of the world know the Sabbath when they wasn't believing in God? Come on now. Was, 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 was Goliath a believer of God? Were those in Egypt when they had them in, in 400 years of slavery? Were they believers of God? So however they were running their days and their systems, they was doing it according to what they believe, right? There you go. Y'all ain't hearing me, man. Listen what I'm saying to you. The children of Israel circumcised their penis, separating themselves from the rest of the world. They believed in God. So if God said that today is the Sabbath, they would have known those things for the simple fact that they was in communion with God. They was in connection with God. Anybody who was not a believer of God as our world is today would not know what the actual day is because God don't talk to those who are in darkness. The Bible said God hear of not sinners. The Bible said you don't have the spirit, you're not none of his. The Bible says specifically that... Uh, anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And it says that a friend of the world makes you an enemy against God. That's the word. That's the facts. So these people that's in the world, are God ain't communicating with them. God never made up 
these words. These men made up these words. So when I was telling this Hebrew so-called Israelite guy, they trying to, they all is talking in black Jesus and black Jesus. The simplicity thing right here, my brother, there is no Sunday or Saturday in the Bible. Wherever you're talking about, whoever brought you on to become a Hebrew Israelite, they got the information from the internet. That's facts. Ain't nowhere in scripture where it's mentioned Saturday or Sunday. I don't care what they saying. They went to the internet. You can't, you cannot go to the internet and talk about you of God. Y'all can't understand that? So when everybody goes to church tomorrow, I'm telling you, they false Christians. This ain't for no argument or for no debate. That's facts. Y'all just scared to say it. Y'all scared to tell your moms and your dads. Your wives and your husband, your brothers and sisters, y'all scared to tell them. Your grandma and grandma, but y'all scared. That's why when you scared, you ain't going to go to heaven. Because you ashamed of him, he ashamed of you. That's the facts. You deny him, he can't deny himself. Because he true. But what I'm telling you is that y'all scared. I'm not scared. That's why I tell them. I'm like, y'all know, man, I don't care who is my mom, whoever. I'm like, y'all know that stuff is fake. You talking about you trying to get to heaven. You ain't even doing what's right to get there. You talking about you trying to drive safe in a car, but you got you, you got on blindfolds. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to make sure I get there safe. You ain't getting there safe. You got a blindfold on. About to crash. You think God and God know that you lazy and God know that you that you love darkness better than him. That's why I say he a jealous God. I'm telling you. They keep on trying to make excuses. Oh, I've been deceived. You ain't been deceived. Stop being lazy and read that Bible. You ain't going to see Saturday or Sunday. They couldn't get it. I was like, Saturday is not in the Bible. That was created by man. You don't understand that Christianity was created from darkness. That's why it's called Christianity and not Christian. It's not the same. That's why it's called the Antichrist. It's not the same. That's why it's called the false messiah. It's not the same. Y'all still don't get it? They telling y'all clear as day it's Christianity. They It's on the internet. Your pastor said, your mama said, you done said it. You, they're telling you that we are different than what the Bible say. That's why it's called Christianity. They made a name for it. They don't even talk. They call it the rapture. They, make, they, they tell you how they're going to get to this imaginary place that they believe is called heaven. The Bible said, what it say, Jeremy? They steal God's word. They stole it. That's all they do. So y'all keep on thinking because they're, they, oh, you know, the Bible said the Bible. Man, get out of here. Ain't no Bible saying nothing that you talking about. You ain't going to try to manipulate scripture and try to pick and choose. Oh, cut my hair. But you got a collection plate going around. You open up on Sunday. Ain't nowhere to say on Sunday. All them guys, Geno Jennings, y'all going to see them on TV tomorrow. All of them. Ain't nowhere in the Bible would say open, have church on Sunday. They do it though. You see? That's what I'm telling you. They can't say nothing about me. Let me ask y'all a question. Is drinking water a sin? And how do you know? Is marriage a sin? And how do you know? So is drinking water a sin? I'm just asking. Is it, is it a sin to drink water? <laughs> you know, I'm just the point I'm making. Is being married a sin? Okay, y'all will say no, right? How do you know that it's not a sin? Because the word of God tells you. So my question is this. So how are people able to say that these things aren't sinful? But when people are doing sinful stuff, nobody is saying anything. When there's no instructions, I mean, when there's instructions on not doing things, the false Christian is doing it. Nobody say anything. Nobody. That's the problem. Okay, so look. Judge in yourselves. Is it calmly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a woman, if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, right? It is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if a man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither church of God. Right? Now, 
they're saying if a man seems to be contentious, it's not the woman. Because it'd be the man that would be the one that's preaching the word of God and enforcing the scriptures. Okay? So, so oh, where my brother at? Oh, Keelan. You still there, Keelan? So look, if you're there, let me get back to it. Oh. The guy, Sheldon, that's at the bottom right there, he just wrote me on Messenger and said, That's what he just wrote me on Messenger. He said, hi, B. Then he sent me the middle finger just now. <laughs> you see the point I'm talking? You see the stuff I'm telling y'all? That is crazy. <laughs> you see the darkness? But listen to what I'm trying to say. So listen, at the end of the day, he said, thank you for your message today. But then he said, this is for not responding to me. You effed up a-hole. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So listen, this is why I'm telling you, the Bible say we're going to be hated for his name. Say, oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Before I get into that, um, this is what I want to tell y'all too. The world teaches you that being possessed is what you see on movies. Now, we all know that movies aren't real. Okay? We know that movies are fake, fictional, created with green screens and props. That's why in a movie you can see everything that you can't see truly in the natural. Right? People just shooting guns and people just falling. They got pinpoint accuracy. You know, falling from 300 feet off a building and jump into a water and survive. You know what I'm saying? Like just everything that's not realistic. So the point I'm trying to make is that you see movies like The Exorcist of Emily Rose. They make those specifically so you would believe that that's what being possessed looks like. Because remember, Christianity don't teach you what the Bible say. So they're not going to tell you that people that had demons were living like regular people. It just was being, you know, demon was affecting them in that area. Yeah, so that's the reality. Um, so uh, let me go back to what I was saying. So... Let me give y'all this real quick. I already screenshot them, Sheldon. You could unsend them, but I screenshotted them just to put them up there. So now there's no instructions. That's why I'm using two. I'm using two these two, these two verses for for a reason. There's no instructions, right, for a man here, right, as a Christian. Didn't say God said, right? He said nature. Right. Then he's talking about a woman. Now, let your women keep silence in the churches. For it's not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as as also as all says the law. And they will learn anything. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame. For it's a shame uh, for a woman to speak in the church. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first. Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman. Being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. Now they read this, right? But it's questions. They tell you how you'll be saved. They tell you to be silent. They tell you why God did it this way. Because what Eve did, so this is the this is the this is the the divine order that God gave us, the consequences that you know that came because of actions. Look, they're telling you exactly why. They 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 telling you, and people still read this and be like, you know, oh, um, you know, that's just what it is, you know. So you see what I'm trying to say? They'll still say what they want to say when there is direction, and when there's not direction, <clears throat> they don't have anything to say, you know. So look. The false Christian, the false Christian talks very much worldly. They only been taught how to mention a few names from the Bible as their opener to conversations or like a letter intro introduction. But when they get comfortable, the worldly saying will slip out. And one is like, for instance, if one is cooking some fish in a deep fryer and someone will say, 
someone saying you dropping that fish in there yet did you drop that fish in there yet they will uh say yep i'm dropping like it's hot but god is good that's 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 an example i'm giving y'all that's how that's how um the false christian talks i'm just showing y'all how to catch it that's how it be like they'll say little things like that like oh you about to cook that you about to drop the fish in there Yup, I'm about to drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. But God is good. You see what I'm trying to say? It's fake. Because they are who they are. That's what I'm about to say. Out of the bunch of the heart, the mouth speaks. They fake. But they use their made up way of talking to try to, you know, uh, uh, push push a, a different, you know, <laughs> presentation or personality of who they are. Right? So being a Christian is like driving, being prepared in snow, uh, being prepared in snow, accident or changing lanes. So being a Christian, right, it's like when you go get your driving test, you're being taught how to be a responsible, you know, uh, citizen on the road. You're taught how to be safe. You're taught how to, you know, get over when we see mercy vehicles. You're taught how to, you know, this and that. You're taught those things. So being a Christian, we're just taught how to function in righteousness while we're here on this earth. That's what we're here for, Right. We're taught how to function, right? Since I'm here on this word, how to be prepared. So when you look at like when it's snowing, right? And they tell you, okay, if your car starts skidding, they tell you, you know, what direction to turn towards the, um, you know, the, the way you're spinning to help, you know, reduce your, your car from spinning. So this is the point that I'm trying to make is that when you look at being a true Christian, it's all just preparing us and, and getting us ready for what is to come. Like when you when you take your driver test, they're not saying that you will ever get into an accident, but they're telling you how to prepare, you know, what happened? Huh? Huh? No. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this guy's message. Look, look. Huh? A spoiled brat. You just want to be persecuted. <laughs> what? <laughs> just writing some weird stuff. That's all I was saying. I could just go to the Dollar Tree real quick and get some stuff and just take it while you're doing all of this. What? Take, it, take it where? Huh? Take what where? My phone about to die, though. Well, I could give you the box if you want that. Is it charging? I just know we got to be at the place at a certain time. So. Oh, you saying we got we to watch it? It's, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to just finish up and I just let, leave this to, with them. Are you, um, are you, you still doing the thing over here? What? No, I can unplug, you know, I can just put that up. That ain't no big deal. And what about the airplane? What? You still got no system. Oh, how are we going to do it? Well, worst case scenario, we just got to just, we just got to just get him to what's the name again? Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I just, I didn't know what you were going to do. I think while you're doing this, I could just uh, move the car on the other side and make this real quick. Okay. Yeah, that'd be perfect. So being a Christian is like being prepared, you know, for accidents, you know, driving in the snow, you know, changing lanes. It's just preparation. All they're doing is teaching us what's to come and how we deal with things you know, before. So what I'm saying is they're not telling you that you're going to have accidents, but they want you to know how to act and respond, you know, to prevent those things. And if you do, you know, those things do happen, you know, to put your car on the side of the road, you know, get to the shoulder, you know, in a safe manner, put your hazards on, you know, like they're teaching you. So all I'm saying is that's how the Bible is for a Christian. So to say that we always sin and we always make mistakes, that's just so weird when we're being taught how not to sin. Remember before we didn't know, first of all, it wasn't so much that we didn't know how to sin. I mean, we didn't know not to sin, right? Or we didn't know what, like we didn't know what all the sins were and we didn't know, right? How to deal with, you know, when we face situations and we didn't know everything that we need to know to prevent those things, to change our mind. Remember, if you really know the secret about being a Christian, it's really just changing your mind and your attitude towards towards the things of the world. That's what it does. Right? So 
is to change our mind. So it's like instead of going in, instead of getting up, getting up out of bed and looking at, you know, the world like, oh, I don't like people. God wants you to wake up and love people. God wants you to instead of going to sleep like, you know, I don't like whites. I don't like blacks. You know, somebody mess with me. You know, I'm going to punch them out or I'm going to curse them out. Instead of that mind frame, now God is telling you, hey, I don't want you to think that way. So I want you to think this way by loving your neighbor as yourself. And Philippians tells you, think on things that are lovely, things that are just. Because he's telling you when you do those things, it's going to take away that mind frame of having evil surmising and thinking that everybody's out to get you and, you know, trying to, you know, change the world by your anger and telling somebody off. You know, you can't change what's in somebody's heart. And, you know, that's why the Bible says like it's flesh and blood. So when you understand that these ways are designed to change us as far as our thought process, knowing that behind every ungodly act is darkness, is sin, you know, Satan, a demon, a person's heart being in the world. So you, you can't do anything about that, but you can do something for yourself. You can't change them, but you can change yourself. You can't govern them, but you can govern yourself. That's what the Bible is telling you as a Christian. So when they're sitting here telling you, like, there's no one that's perfect, but you got a perfect driving record. You got a perfect. That means you see what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just weird. And when this perfect, these perfect words are telling us how to live perfect, they're acting like it's not. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's 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 the disrespect part. That's the disrespect part because they acting like it's not telling us how to be perfect. It's not telling us how to live without having problems and mistakes. Like, it's telling you. Even the Bible say walk circumspectfully, not as fools, but as wise. Circumspectfully mean not to make mistakes. It's, it tells you that. So, like, why would it tell you things if it wasn't possible? Why did it say that he would never let us be sent to be on what we're able? And I, I, what does it say make a way for us to escape it, that we may be able to bear it? Why does it say that the Lord protect, uh, the Lord's faithful to establish us and keep us from all evil? Why would it say that if it's not true? You see what I'm trying to say? That's why I'm saying, like, the false Christian, they make God word out to be like it's a lie or something. Like, he just, like, you know, like, like God was just up there just writing stuff. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys fly into a rainbow and let you guys, you know, hang out with a leprechaun under a rainbow. Like, we act like we're reading stuff like that. We're talking about a God that makes the sun rise and set every day perfectly. We're talking about a God that's been keeping this world, you know, living and breathing and functioning before we even was born. Our grandmothers can tell us, yeah, the world, hey, the, the wind blow, trees grow, grass grow, you know, animals are born, you know. Like, where do animals come from? You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not anything hard for him. So when they're sitting here trying to tell you, oh, no, everybody's not, nobody's perfect and nobody, like, God is perfect. His ways is perfect. The word is perfect. Like, how's all this stuff perfect and we can't do it? Like, what's making us not be able to? When it's just like being a law by the citizen. Do you agree with not breaking the law or do you agree with breaking the law? You know, if you agree with obeying the law sometime and you agree with breaking the law sometime, then what you going to be? A person that obeys sometime, break it. The same way a false Christian is. Sometimes you be like, hey, I don't want to do that. And sometimes you say, okay, I want to do it. But you got some people who's not doing it. And you got some people who's not obeying it sometime, but breaking it all the time. And you got some who's not breaking the law and obeying it all the time. See what I'm saying? It's a difference. Okay? So, tradition, tradition that, that you're, uh, um, you made, you're the, the spies here, etc. Suits, clean cut suits, ties, dresses. You want to portray that image professional. Now, when did, when did suits and dresses get invented? Okay, why does the false Christian wear suits and ties when the Lord wore just a one piece? So even if they, that's what I'm trying to show you. Like, I'm not saying we have to wear a one piece. I'm not, I'm not no hypocrite. I'm not saying we got to wear no one piece. But why they don't, why does the, 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 the Christianity people today don't look nothing like Jesus? He didn't dress that fancy like them. He didn't, he was simple. The Bible said he wore one gown. He had some sandals. We know he had sandals because John the Baptist mentioned it, Right. And we know that his his thing his his gown was a one piece, so he was plain. So where is the 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 the, the pastors coming from today? The false bishops, all of them coming from with all these, these these gaiters and these leather shoes and these socks and you know the the jackets and you know all like where are they getting this from? Like the the women dressing up with these big fruit hats and the women with these stilettos on and heels and these dresses. Like where like who to, like who are they looking for that showed them that? You know, I mean, who are they looking to to show them that? It's nowhere in the Bible. So they had to clearly see it from who? Satan. 
the world. Who wears suits and ties? Professional people, business people. That's the truth. Who wear dresses? Who dresses casual and, you know, kind of like dressy? The, the world. The world does that. The Bible, remember the words in the Bible were written before they had any things in the world. So why is it, a, is it tradition for you to wear a suit or dress up on Sunday? God is around every day of the week. Not just one day that you go to church on Sunday. You're, you're trying to dress in your Sunday best. Cause you're going to go before you like you acting like God is in that building. God is everywhere. The Bible say the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So like, what it like he's everywhere. So like, why would one day you dress up like, like, you know what I mean? Dress up that way every day. Then if, if it's, if it's honorable to dress that way on Sunday, as you feel, wouldn't it be honorable for God to do it every day? Since you know, he sees you every day. So every day you'll wear whatever you're wearing, dressing down, don't got your hair done. Don't got this on, you, you, you know, your makeup. I'm not saying you're supposed to wear that stuff. I'm saying that's how y'all dress. You got all that stuff on. You don't got none of the stuff on throughout the week for real. You looking like whatever. And God sees you every day. But then when you go in the building, tradition-wise, you're dressing up in your Sunday best. That's fake. Y'all look like car salesmen. Y'all look like women that work in office buildings. Y'all look like men that's detectives. Y'all look like people that's in white-collar America, blue-collar America. That's who y'all look like. Those are people who who dress that way to look professional, to stand out, to look, you know, to be different, you know, from the rest of the world. All them, them haircuts. That's why that's why they got they they try to push cutting your hair so bad, because clean cut is part of our nation. Think about it. In the army, you can't have long hair. A police officer, you can't have long hair. Right. And, and the different branches of the military, Navy, the Marines, the uh, Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, you can't have long hair. You understand? So in many places, many jobs, many different things, a lot of times you can't have long hair because that's their tradition. They told you the nature of the world. Come on now. You ain't hearing me. So that's why I'm telling you. Paul said it. That's why you look at most of these military and these police officers you know, judges, like, you don't see them with no long hair. It ain't even no law that don't say they can't do it. That's just what they tradition. They said nature. I'm telling you. So that's what I'm telling you. That's how you understand it. But we showing that we ain't of nature and we're not of the world. That's why we can grow our hair. You understand what I'm saying? Think about it. We ain't got no rules against God. I don't care about that. Yeah, all these people got their hair cut, but got a false church name. All these people got a, got a haircut. And, and wearing suits and ties and going to church on Sunday. And there's nowhere the Bible say Sunday. So y'all cutting y'all hair, wearing it short, right? So y'all following all God's commands, right? But then what command are you following to go to church on Sunday? What command are you following to ask for tithes and offerings? What command are you following to call yourself a pastor over a church and your wife being a false lady? What command? There's no. So how are you so adamant about cutting hair? And you where are you following the scriptures of what you're doing today? You made that stuff up. And the only reason why y'all pushing the cut the hair thing so bad is because you are following the 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 the, the clean cut look of the world. That's the truth. You dress like them, you talk like them, you're on the same time. Look, they on Sunday, the world is not working, right? Most of the most of the country is not working on Sunday, right? Where is the false Christian at? Having church. Who told him that Sunday? Who told him that Sunday was Sunday? Constantine, who was worldly, right? The the, the worldly people created the, the the day Sunday, the the word the word Sunday, right? The world created the word Saturday, right? And and having a day off. The Bible say you supposed to rest on the seventh day, right? In the Old Testament, right? So my question is this: So you see the world picking and choosing because you got people who uh, will be working on Sunday or working off on Saturday, Saturday, different things like that. Right? So this is the point that I'm trying to make to you is that if, if you look at what they teach you, right? In these false churches, they're not doing what the Bible says, but they'll try to push things that they misinterpreting in the Bible. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, for instance, they'll push to you, First John 1 and 8. They'll push to you things in Romans chapter 7 
with Paul. They'll push that. Oh, Paul said he sinned. Oh, first John said, if any man say he have no sin, they'll push that. But then when you show them what the Bible say, multiple scriptures that, that contradicts what they're telling you, they don't want to hear it because they're only here to push what makes them look good and what gives them comfort in their life of sin. That's why I never heard nobody ever say, I like the sin. Then what are you sinning for? Since you're saying that you're being forced to sin, they could never say that because then how would they be trust for anything? If they're saying they're forced to sin, that means they could be forced to kill somebody. They could be forced to rape somebody, molest somebody. Think about it, because it's all sins. They never say that. They hide behind no one is perfect. And I don't like when I do sins. Like, they don't, like, they just, I'm telling you, they crazy people. Okay? So traditions in the world, traditions from these false churches created that dressing up in suits and ties. Because it came from the world. You notice everything that comes from the world looks like the world today. Think about it. The same false Christians celebrate Christmas. The rest of the world celebrate Christmas. Y'all not seeing the connection? They celebrate Thanksgiving, 4th of July. Like you got false Christians that support Independence Day and all this stuff, right? Like where did you see the Christians in the Bible participating in the, the pagan holidays? Y'all want to know what they were doing back in those days? What, what, what they were celebrating and stuff? Do your research. Show me one time where Paul was participating in some type of Roman holiday. Show me. Show me where Paul was participating in something that was created by some pagans. He even tell you don't, do, don't get into that stuff. You see? So that's what I'm trying to show you. So why, does the, why do people who are atheists celebrate Christmas? Why are people who are in Buddhism or Hindu or whatever celebrate Christmas? Why are people who are in different countries who don't even believe in God celebrate Christmas? It's supposed to be for Jesus. So why is a Christian doing, a so-called Christian doing what the rest of the world is doing? Because they're not a Christian. They are like the rest of the world. They just happen to be claiming a name that's in the Bible. That's the easy way to understand it, y'all. It's that simple. You understand? They are the same as the rest of the world. They just claiming something that's in the Bible. So, so Google puts them in a the category and say, oh, there's 2 billion Christians. Because those 2 billion people that's in the world are willing to claim Christianity. They're willing to say Christian, right? And the other billions are not. That's all. But they're still the same. That's why they do the same thing, celebrate the same holy holidays that's created from, um, from um, pagans. Christian is not in the Bible, right? Jesus Christ being born that day is not in the Bible. It's made up. Thanksgiving, it's all made up. And they're going to fight you and argue you because they like to enjoy it but they don't like to have to accept the fact that they're not Christians and they find pleasure in sin. Let's move on. Matthew 23. Read them. Y'all got a chance. The Bible talks about Jesus talking about how they dress the Pharisees, how they, they made their jackets and everything. He talked about all that stuff, how they want to be seen of men. Everything you see today, every time you see one of these so-called pastors giving out something, they got it televised. They're showing you on, Oh, look, we gave scholarships. We gave somebody cars. We gave out gifts to the kids. The Bible is supposed to do it in secret. Let's left hand know what your right hand is thinking. They're not Christians. You understand? Read Matthew 23. You're going to see everything that's written in Matthew is what they do today. The modern day Pharisees and Sadducees are the denominations. I'm telling you, nobody told the Pharisees and Sadducees to claim to be Pharisees and Sadducees. Nobody told the denominations to call themselves, to call themselves these names they call themselves or even non-denominational. Nobody told them to do that. It's the same thing, dressing a certain way, talking a certain way, coming together, despising the rest of the world. You know, that's how the Pharisees were. So let's move on. Let's look at the word lucre, right? Titus 1 and 11, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things what they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. So these are commands right here where it's telling you not to do things for money, right? It's telling you that. First Timothy 3 and 8. Likewise, must the, be, must, must, the deacon, <laughs> must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given too much uh, wine, not greedy, or filthy lucre. Uh, 1 Timothy 3, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, or filthy lucre, but patient not a brawler, nor covetous. 1 Samuel 8 and 3, and his sons walked not in, a, in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Timothy 1 and 7, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, 
not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. First Peter 5 and 2. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, which among you uh, taken the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Come on now. So how is it something today that they all ask for your money? There's nowhere where Christian paid tithes and offerings. There's nowhere where every time Paul or apostles or Peter and them preached, Jesus preached, money was involved. Show me anywhere where, where Jesus, you've seen somebody give him some money when he prayed for somebody or he healed somebody. Show me where they just gave him money when he was just after he, was, he got done preaching or before he started preaching. Just show me. Show me anywhere where there was offering time when Peter was preaching. We could sit there and look at long scriptures and chapters where Paul was preaching, where Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 2. No tithes and offerings. No money was given. The word tithes and offerings not even in the New Testament for a Christian. Not even in there. Like nowhere from Acts to Revelations is the word tithing and offering for a Christian to give. They mention it, you know, in Hebrews about Abraham and Meshelechek, you know, giving you wisdom and knowledge and all those things. But nowhere are they talking about, oh yeah, Paul took up tithing and offering or Peter took up tithing and offering. It's not there. So how are there all these commands about lucre, but they're not being obeyed, but they got people talking about cut your hair. Come on now. You see what I'm trying to show you? Christian and Christianity, two different things. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing. I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe it is unto me if I present the gospel. For I do this willingly. I have a ward. But if against my will, a, dis a disposition of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward? What is my reward then? Really, that I, when I preach the gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. Do y'all hear that? So you see why my title says what it says? You, do you hear him saying without a charge? So why every Sunday are they asking you for offerings? Why are they sending collection plates around? I'm, just, I'm showing you like, so if they're following instructions, as the Bible says, 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 17, the instruction that was given to us, they're not reading what Paul, you see why they talk about Paul? You see why, oh, Paul, see, they, they, see why Peter told you? They twist up Paul's word. Just like what Paul read about the nature with here. Look what he's saying. They're going, but Paul was saying, no. Paul was saying what he was saying. He's telling you that he preached. He said, follow me as he followed Christ. Paul grew out his hair. I can grow out mine. Paul cut his hair. I can cut mine. You know, but my I'm in consecration. But I'm just showing you, you know, he did the same thing. I can follow him. You telling me that Paul didn't grow out his hair? He sure did. And he cut it. I could do the same thing. He say, follow me as I follow Christ. So if he didn't want me to grow out my hair, he shouldn't have grew his out. What? Right? Think about it. You can't be a leader and do things that you can't say, don't, don't do as I do, but do as I say. That don't make any sense. That's a hypocrite. Okay? First one is 1 and 11. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. What did Paul pay tithe and offerings? Matthew 10 and 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Come on now. Second Peter th 2 and 3. And through covenants shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, who judgment now of long time linger not in their damnation slumber. Ask a false pastor what this means. Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh this orally and not at the tradition which ye have received of us. For yourselves know how you ought to uh, follow us, for we behave not ourselves orally among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wroth, but what wroth would means work with labor and travail night and day. They might not be troubled with any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example into you to follow us. Not no, not to be chargeable that we might not be chargeable to any of you. You see that? Every man according to he has purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly, or out of necessity. For God love a cheerful giver. And if you read Second Corinthians chapter seven, chapter eight. In chapter 9, they were talking about ministrating to the saints, which you've seen in the book of Acts, chapter 2, right? Chapter 4, chapter 3. That's what they're talking about. People were needing assistance, not the pastor. The people were needing assistance. There was no pastor over churches. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm telling you. That's why I'm making all these videos now by the grace of God. Because in the future, when y'all wonder why I'm not responding to people, because they're not Christians. You can't argue with the devil. 
He, he doesn't have any reasoning. You know, he's going to make it seem like people want to have. No, they don't want to talk. What I'm saying is true. I'm reading the scriptures for myself. If, okay, if, if you you see what I'm reading, you see what I believe. Hey, we're not the same. It's that simple. You're not about to make me change what I'm reading. I read what I read. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? We're just not the same. You know, you're not a Christian. That's all it is. You know, you don't even live like a Christian. You can't sit here and tell somebody to cut their hair when you go into a church on Sunday, when you're paying tithes and offers, when your church name is not even biblical, when you, you know, you're, you're part of a denomination, like you're separating yourself. You can't, you can't, they can't be schism in the body of Christ and you're trying to enforce the word of God. We're not enforcing what the word of God say for yourself. You can't enforce the word of God when you're not even living the word of God or enforcing it or, or applying it in the bond to yourself. You can't pick and choose what you're going to use that you feel you can enforce when you picking and choosing what um, you feel you're using for yourself. You got to obey it all. You can't. You One person is not going to be safe from going to hell. Right. By obeying one or two things that the Bible say to do or a person not doing one or two things won't get you into heaven. Jesus specifically said in Matthew seven, he said, um, Many will come say, Lord, Lord. He said, probably never do you do that work iniquity. So it's sin. It didn't say because they committed a certain type of sin or they did one sin or two sin. He said iniquity. That means sin. So all y'all saying you're not perfect. You're not what you need to be. You're not what you used to be. Sin is what kept them from getting in. And you're sitting here saying that you're sinning and sinning and sinning. You're going to have the same outcome. You understand? So you clearly see what they're talking about. Lucre. They're talking about preaching the gospel freely without charge. And they ask you every Sunday for money. And y'all don't see it because y'all making them because you're believing that the Bible is saying this about that and tithing off. But you don't see it nowhere where a Christian pay tithes and offerings. Second Corinthians chapter nine is talking about ministering to the saints. Read verse one, second Corinthians chapter nine. Matter of fact, can anybody give me second Corinthians chapter uh, uh, nine, verse one real quick? Because if I, if I back out, it's going to uh, cut the video, cut the video off real quick. I got seven percent. Can anybody give me second Corinthians chapter one? Uh. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. Can anybody get that for me real quick? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. Real quick before I get out of here. So to answer your question, Killeen, there's no scripture for us to cut our hair. Or how low it should be. We're going to come with our own, we're going to come with our own um, belief of what we feel is having short and having long. And that's the sin. Because the Bible said clearly that's the understand this. I need 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. Can anybody get that? King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. Okay, so when you look at what Paul is saying there, you'll know. Okay, look. For as touching the ministering to the saints. Do y'all hear that? Does it say anywhere about tithing and offering? Okay, so listen, hold on. Let me show y'all. For as touching the minister to the saints, it is superfluous super for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them in Macedonia, that Achilles was ready a year ago, and you, your zeal has provoked them, has provoked every man. I mean, every, every, uh, have provoked very many. Now watch this. Show, show you all this real quick. Now look. Now, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, it's the same chapter. This is just, this is just seven verses down from, from verse 1. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or on necessity for God of a cheerful giver. Okay, this, this is the seventh verse down from the first verse I just read. Y'all follow me? This is the seventh verse down. Don't give grudgingly or on necessity. Don't give what? Go back to verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, not tithing offering. Love you all. God bless. This is crazy.